There we go. I had to unmute myself. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to a Mac 84 live stream. I am Steve, and today we are having some scuzzy madness. Maybe? I don't know. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Hopefully you can see me. Hopefully everything works out well. Hmm? And uh, we'll get this party going, huh? All right, we got 20 people here already. My goodness, we have uh, Caden. Welcome to the stream. We have Jeff, Retrotechie, Tom, Eric. Uh, we have, who else? Uh, Logan. Just scrolling back here. We have Sad Mac. We have, my goodness, a lot of people in the chat here. Just scrolling by the duplicates. <laughs> we have Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. We have Retro Fox. Thank you very much for joining. And who else do we have here? Uh, we have Mozam. Thank you. Uh, spot to Glitcher, uh, another Eric, excellent. We have Nick, and Jolt is here, uh, Fox198 is here, Bruce is here from Brankus Creations, he'll be here if I screw up, excellent. And Michael is here, excellent. Thank you, I like my shirt. Um, Alright, yeah, let's, let's break some stuff, I mean, assemble some things, yes. Um, that's what we'll be doing today, promise, promise. Uh, as, <laughs> as I noticed the electrical tape... <laughs> the very fancy electrical tape holding the light on my microscope is sagging slowly, so we'll have to maybe put some electrical tape back on there. But uh, anyway, uh, all right, let's get uh, let's get uh, stuff going here. So I have to move this off my desk. But I wanted to show you this lovely device here. Uh, so this is an Apple Tech Step. Some of you may have an idea of what this is. Uh, I actually use this in my repairs to test the hardware of the Macintosh uh, machines I repair. Unfortunately, I only have two of these little CPU test ROM sockets that plug in there, and uh, each of them do different things. This is volume one and volume two. Volume one covers the classic, the SE, SE30, the two, the 2X, the 2CX, uh, and this covers the LC, the LC2, and the classic two. Um, there are a few others that I do not have um, and they cover, uh, like, the Performa series, the later LCs and stuff like that. And they are rarer than hen's teeth to find. And that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, I know someone was trying to reverse engineer them. So, fingers crossed that they actually get that done. No, I... Th see, the funny thing about that is those things go for a lot of money these days. I bought that for, like, $25 back in 2006 on eBay. Yeah. Uh, it didn't come with the cables or the case or anything like that, but that's that's where I got it from. So, it was a different time. It was a different time. All right, let's catch up on the chat here before we get going here. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba oh, let's see. Me hitting the eject key on my computer. <laughs> Double my money. No, thank you. Um, that tool is invaluable for testing. Because what's cool about that is you, you plug in all of the uh, I.O. ports into this thing. So you plug in your SCSI, your ADB, your serial, um, and your audio, and it'll test everything. And so it, it'll boot the machine off a of SCSI, and you could do tests of the serial ports and the, the chips and everything. So let's get on to today's topic here before Mike gets angry and falls asleep. Either one of those. Um, <laughs> so let's get started. Let's unplug unnecessary things from this power strip. He throws things around wildly. And there we go. Plug in our soldering iron, which will hopefully not explode this stream. That will be nice. <laughs> More scuzzy shenanigans. Of course, Sean. Of course. Welcome to the chat, Sean. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> RGB modded. No, thank you. Beep. All right, so... If you caught the last stream I did, that was for this. This is the RAS SCSI adapter. It's actually sitting on top of a Raspberry Pi Model 2. I'll wiggle that out of there gently. This is the official way to wiggle it out. <laughs> it's getting there, I promise. It'll probably help if I rocked it back and forth, but this is this is just more fun. All right, so <laughs> this is the RAS SCSI adapter with the optional uh, daisy chain adapter that is plugged on top here uh, and so this plugs into a Raspberry Pi and gives it SCSI functionality uh, emulates the hard drive and also has some cool Ethernet stuff that's in testing so I assembled that 
uh, in the previous stream, and I bought the little magnet uh, that uh, was an option. They gave you this little sticker for free, but the magnet was so cool, I had to get the magnet. So, that's very neat. I'm going to be playing around with that sometime soon, I'm sure. And, oh, the soldering iron is dipping into the plastic of the soldering iron holder. Whoever designed this soldering iron holder with plastic on that area is a, is a, is a, a dum dum. All right, so let's talk about the blue SCSI. So, blue SCSI. First off, Tom, thank you very much for sending this beautiful sticker with my purchase of the blue SCSIs. And here they are. So I ordered two of these blue SCSI adapters because I figured if I'm gonna assemble one, I might as well do two. And My heart just, you know, glows with joy when I see printed out documents on tractor feed paper printed from an image writer tool. How cool is that? Printed from an actual image writer tool uh, using Claris Works on a Macintosh SE30. Very cool, Tom. And so there's some notes here. I will be following the instructions, uh, but <laughs> it's also a personalized note here. And Tom says, thanks, Steve. Keep it in the blue envelope so it's easy to spot in your basement. Unfortunately, there are quite a few blue envelopes in the basement, but I think that'll help a little bit. So thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate the sticker, and hopefully we won't lose it. Everything's on my desk right now, but stranger things have happened. So I'm going to move this sticker over there so we don't melt it with our soldering iron. And we're going to open up one of these fantastic packages and assemble them. I follow instructions sometimes. All right. So, speaking of which, I put the instructions back in the envelope. And now I have to take them out again to go to the website that they mentioned. All right, so we go to the, the Git of Hub here and uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, okay. If it would help if I spelled things correctly, wouldn't it? Otherwise, we'll get some instructions that don't make any sense. Okay, so we have the blue SCSI uh, link here. Now, just uh, to give you guys a heads up, um, there are two resources I want to give you a shout out to. If you're interested in a blue SCSI adapter, they're fantastic. Basically, what they are is an Arduino uh, Nano or Blue Pill or whatever the Arduino model is, and an adapter to make this emulate a Macintosh hard drive and do some other cool stuff. Uh, obviously, a SCSI hard drive. Now, there's a link in the video description that'll get you to the blue SCSI website. Um, Tom, Eric, others, uh, Bruce of Brangus Creations is an Australian provider uh, and seller of the Blue SCSI adapter, but it's open source. Anybody can download the files. Anybody could order your own. Um, you know, I ordered the kits because that's what I want to do. I want to assemble them, but it's an open project. You could modify it. You can improve it. You could do whatever you'd like to it. It's fantastic. So format the SD card. It will fix things. Yes. Well, uh, I don't have, I actually need to find an SD card to play around with this on. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. I am, I have SD card problems. Anyway, not, not enough. It's never, you never have enough. You never, ever have enough. Anyway, let's get to it. So I'm going to take this thing open and we're going to see what's inside of it. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. just making sure I'm not missing anything in the chat because it goes by real fast. Tractor feed, actually, well, whatever the paper's called, you know what I mean. <laughs> Form fed, tractor feed, image writer paper, dot matrix printer paper, whatever. All right, so let's um, minimize all the other crap on my desktop so I can actually see what I'm working on here. And we have an assembly link here. See docs assembly.md. Okay, building. Okay, this looks like fun. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, you were talking about an issue you were having. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get things started. And I say that, and we're 11 minutes in, but that's pretty good for this show. Okay, so do, 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 do. let's open up the little bag. And we're going to keep track of all the goodies this time. Uh, so let's bring the camera down a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the camera holder thingy like it did last time, because that was annoying. And hello to all 40 of you hanging out. We got a very handsomely printed, uh, 3D printed blue SCSI uh, mount here. That is very nice. Look at that. That is very cool. I like that. Ooh. Ooh. Pretty. Very cool. All right. And we have some headers here. 
It's, it's like playing with Legos. I love it. All right, so we have a micro SD card slot there. That's going to be fun to solder on. Um, we have the Arduino board here. What is this? They're called the Blue Pill. I'm, I'm really uh, a newbie with Arduino stuff. The last Arduino I have is actually over here. Pull that out for you. Uh, this is a much smaller one. Yeah, this is Arduino Nano, so this is different. Um, but this I converted to convert a Macintosh Plus 512K and 128K keyboard to a standard PC PS2 keyboard adapter. Uh, port rather so basically you could plug this into those Macs that those keyboards are getting very hard to find these days very 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 hard um, and you could just use a PS2 keyboard instead not the most elegant solution because it's a PC keyboard but hey it works I did a video about this you could find it on my channel it was only a few weeks or a month ago or so so check that out if you want to know how that works I didn't invent it I just followed the instructions okay so let's see yes I did do a video about it I do a video about a lot of things, and then I do a video about videos about some stuff, and I forget, and then, you know, yeah, then it just sits on the YouTube unlisted side for a while until someone tells me to post it. All right, so I'm just going to wiggle this out of here, because I'm going to have to solder things to it. Okay, all right, let's see. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. So just checking out all the parts here, so we have a little power connector, we have some... Uh, these are little, what is it, the resistor packs for the SCSI termination, I believe. We have some uh, diodes from what looks like it. And all right, so this, this shouldn't be too difficult. It looks like um, much, much less parts than the Ross SCSI adapter. So I'm all for it. Um, all right, so let's, let me try and do, well, can I bring the camera down a little bit further? Ah. Yeah, maybe. That might work, but then when I move the microscope, well, we'll just, We'll just go with this as we can here. So, sorry for the... This is going to be a bit of a mess. What isn't a mess? All right, so let's follow the instructions here. So, solder on the surface mount SD card holder. Uh, there's no picture of the orientation. Oh, there is further down. Okay, so we're going to put our little Arduino board to the side. We're going to open this little thingy. <laughs> no worries, Tom. I have two, so worst case scenario, I'll... I'll I could cannibalize parts from the other. All right, and so look at the orientation of this thing. Okay, and, and guys, if you're uh, updating the documentation on the GitHub thing, feel free to steal any photos or any stills from this stream if it will help you documentation-wise. Uh, I mean that sincerely. So let's go to the microscope view here. Oh, the microscope does not want to be detected today on the camera, does it? Oh, you pain in the butt. Oh, well, not this again. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I was about to start throwing things around. All right, so let's transition over here so we get a view of this. Um, oh, well, thank Well, never mind. We got pictures of the SD card already, so we uh, slot already, so we don't have to worry about that. So let me adjust the focus of the camera here just to make sure that uh, you see a bit of a better picture there. And we can do a bit better than that. Come on. There we go. Excellent. All right. Um, I believe, well, okay, so first off, this project is being updated all the time. I believe there were initial issues with the Macintosh Plus, but I believe those has been resolved as far as the model with the later firmware uh, or ROMs or whatever uh, changes to the SCSI bus. Because the SCSI bus um, on the Macintosh Plus, the first revisions were using, you know, a very early version of the SCSI implementation and you know it had quite a few bugs in it there were later revisions of that which alleviated some of those issues but not all of them so just something to keep in mind um yeah like bruce is saying it might only work on system seven uh, oh it works on all roms now excellent 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 so never mind don't listen to me listen to the the smarter people in the chat that actually know what they're talking about <laughs> i'll put it to the test we'll we'll play around with it on a few machines today assuming we could get all these assembled and in working order. Now, I have Discord closed, so I'm sorry I'm not uh, referring to that right now. Um, but it looks like easy peasy. Just want to put that. Th I've actually never soldered one of these before, but I think I'll be able to handle this. <laughs> Famous last words. Hey, Mickey, welcome to the stream. So I'm going to start. I'm going to I'm going to try and narrate what I'm doing here. Um, 
loosely, so I apologize if I just start doing things without talking about them, but I'm going to try my best to narrate. I'm just putting a good amount of flux anywhere near where I'm going to put the soldering iron, just to make sure that everything uh, adheres correctly. Flux is magic, and when you ensure it's on there, uh, you know, happy days. All right, so I believe, yeah, that's the way it goes. And it would help if I had my tweezers. Where'd my tweezers go? This is what happens when you clean off a desk. All your parts go flying. And you get distressed. Steven, why didn't you have a career in rhyming? Well, uh, nobody wants to hear that. Okay, where is my tweezers? My good pair of tweezers, not the crummy pair of tweezers. <laughs> this is off to an exciting start already. I know I just had them. I swear 90% of my streams are me looking for the tools that were just on my desk a moment ago. Here they are. I found them. Yay! I knew they were right here. Hey, Gritty, welcome. <laughs> yes, we, we were originally going to do our, our Mac Act show tonight, but a lot of us weren't available. I had to run some errands. Everyone else uh, had to run some errands. Uh, GT just moved. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're going to continue the podcast next week. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, myself and a, a bunch of the other fine folks in this chat are part of the Mac Yak crew, and we do a podcast called, you guessed it, Mac Yak, and we stream it on YouTube every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you are new to this and you, you want to uh, join our insanity, well, you're welcome to do so. If you just can't get enough of, of a bunch of guys just yakking about old apple stuff well mostly old apple stuff uh yeah, that's probably the podcast for you so tune in on youtube and check that out and thank you very much grudy for the super chat eep that's uh that's well, that wasn't a good eep let's try that again eep there we go oh and i lost the little uh picture in picture webcam here which uh we should probably put that back up so you can actually see my face maybe you don't want to but too bad no <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, I had to click the things. There's the webcam. Click the thing. There we go. And let's see. There we go. Maybe you kind of see me. There. That's a little bit better. I'm in, I'm in a box. All right. Anyway. <laughs> you're actually ready for once. Sure. You're, you're going you're gonna to have a hard time making us believe that, Greg. No matter how hard you try. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, so let's get everything sort of set up here. And I believe the proper way to do this... <laughs> Mac84 doing something the proper way? I know, silly of me. Uh, I believe it's to simply just try and anchor down these bits first. And you need more solder to do that. It's not on like perfectly straight, but I think you'll be okay. And sorry that the uh, the stuff I see through the uh, microscope is a little bit different from what the camera picks up. So my apologies if anything is uh, off uh, camera, etc. Yes, yeah, I will uh, I'll be very careful not to block the entry of the SD card slot. Thank you for the tip. Yeah, I've never done one of these tinier ones before. Maybe I didn't, I just don't remember. Let's do some drag soldering, because we're rad. We're radical. I think everything made a connection there, actually, so that's, that's nice. Hopefully that was on camera. Um... There we go. Make sure everything looks happy. Okay. Oh, thank you, Justin, very much for the super chat. I greatly appreciate that. We had to give you a nice, uh, happy eep. Uh, so whenever somebody gives us a super chat, I try and do my best impersonation of the wild eep, the classic Macintosh sound effect. So, yeah, the the uh, the. 
this soldering iron, um, I made it unhappy once, and I didn't have some of the safety precaution features turned on, and, um, yeah, it glowed red hot. It, it fired bad, and it was kind of scary. So let's actually try and shove a little micro SD card in there to make sure we're not screwing anything up from the get-go, huh? How about that? Uh, it would be helpful if I knew where micro SD card was. And I just saw it, because here, it's in the Raspberry Pi that I have over here. There. Let's just steal that little SD card out of there. And let's see if we can insert this correctly. Am I doing it right? Maybe? No, yeah. It's... Unless I goofed it up already. I might have goofed it up. Because it doesn't want to go in. Ooh, there's a lot of flux in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Check the corners. Okay, I will check those corners. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to see because it, it looks like it's it's uh, going in on this direction, but not on the edge here. So I might have just had it, like, tilted too much. Yeah, let's uh, adjust this so I can actually see what the heck I'm looking at. I, I screwed it up already. I screwed... Oh, yes, I am, I am familiar with my good friend, Mr. Wick who, uh, very good, very good friend of mine. Let me, uh, move the microscope so I can get a better look at this thing. It's broken! I demand another one! <laughs> it was broken like I got that. It's not due to my inferior soldering skills at all, I promise you. I promise you. Okay, let's, uh, do a little trick here with the microscope. We're gonna look over the edge of the table and get a better look at some things here. Yeah, that could probably be causing it right there, if you could see that. To the right here, I put a little bit too much solder, and that is preventing that from going in all the way. So when I put the SD card in here, see, in, in no likey, it, it not happy not happy so pro tip for anybody who's going to screw this up like i did gotta fix that up so that's what we'll be doing but i'm not perfect anybody who thinks i'm perfect i would i would i would give you your money back <laughs> that is not what's going on here um i make mistakes and hey maybe somebody else could learn from this too hey i screwed it up the same way all right so we're going to get our good friend solderwick over here we're going to try and remove some of the solder on this edge here, especially some that is bleeding into the inward of that connector there. Hopefully this will just suck most of that out without too much trouble. Yep, we need a little bit uh, to persuade it actually in there, because that right there is where everything is hiding. That should do it. Let's hope we didn't blow up anything else. Uh, that was likely when I was drag soldering, and I just kept on going there. So let's uh, test this out. There we go. Look at that. Now it's all happy. Yay! <laughs> Tom is one of the sellers of them, so I, I would say his hoarding is a requirement at this point. I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. So we got that done. Hopefully that is the uh, only mistake we'll make so far. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I could, I could melt that. I could put a dab of solder on the edge there. Um, just a small dab, though. Little dab will do ya. Uh, it is it is not a spring-loaded one, so it's just a, a friction one, which is fine by me. I mean, if if you have the the right setup, you're not really going to be flipping these cards in and out. But I mean, if you really want to, I guess you could get your own um, get your get your own uh, setup, your own uh, SD card slot. That's what I was mean. That's what that's the word I was looking for here. Um, and you could just replace it, I suppose. I mean, this is just a wild assumption. I have no idea how these things work. 
Um, I don't know if they are physically different. <laughs> Look at that. I screwed it up again. Maybe, kind of. No, it still goes in there. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. It's a bit of a tight fit. Um, I'll have to adjust that later. But let's continue with the project here, and we could make some fine tunes as we go along. Yeah, I would imagine the uh, spring-loaded ones are much more expensive. Okay, so let's get moving forward here. That was a weird transition. Okay, so we have the solder of the diodes on the bottom of the board. Make sure they are as flush to the bottom of the board as possible. Well, we're going to sure try. And it looks like we have to orient these. So the stripe is pointing towards the stripe on the board. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I love when things are easy to figure out. Oh, I should get my face in there, maybe. I mean, I guess you want to make sure I'm still alive. Um, yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're going to be putting those through. These are simple little through-hole thingies, so that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> well, Tom, um, you know, that's that's. if you want to go sell those, that's fine with you, but I, I, I can't test them for you. This is a family channel, or at least I, I try to make it a family channel. Um, so we are just bending these diodes as much as I can. Uh, I'm just going to see if I bent these correctly before committing to the other one. All right, so we want to be as flush as possible. So I could I could bend that uh, top lead a little bit better. So I'm just using some tweezers here, but probably want to uh, use some pliers if you have to. We'll see if that works. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to put uh, both of them in there at the same time, and we'll uh, and we'll solder them to the back of the board. I think these little projects are excellent. I mean, the amount of cool retro stuff that we have these modern adapters for these retro computers that we have is simply amazing i absolutely love it so that's uh them added onto the board there you can't see it because it's out of focus anyway but here we go i bet them by hand <laughs> oh i would have done that too if i didn't have my tweezers right next to me don't worry here at mac 84 we do things the savage way as well and that includes just Smashing things a bit with pliers. Uh, speaking of smashing things a bit with pliers, my good friend Dana, Dana does stuff, who hasn't really done anything, and I could say that because he's not in the stream right now. He loves bending things with, with pliers. Although maybe he is here, and then I offended him. And that's very unlikely. I would not offend him. Okay, so we're just putting some flux on the back of these diodes here. And we're going to solder them in place. There we go. Sometimes it takes a second for the pad to heat up enough to grab the solder. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. There we all good. There we go. Okay, so with LC power supply. Ooh boy. Uh, what do I have? That exact one? Hold on. See now you got me curious, Thomas. And this is what happens on this live stream here. Uh, let's see if I have a matching one. One of the ones here is that this is a TDK model, and you're looking for a 6140028. Uh, this is a 6990153. And that is one of the reasons why I really don't accept jobs for power supplies, at least not at this point in time. Um, yeah, I, I often get requests for analog board recapping and power supply recapping and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, it's not something I will never do. 
It's just at this time, it's there's a lot of involved in that. And, you know, if I had unlimited time and resources to play around with that, I'd love to. And, you know, it's a great service I would love to offer for individuals. But there are so many revisions of those power supplies. The caps are um, not terribly expensive, but they can get up there, and especially if you're ordering the wrong ones. And if you go to Mac84.net and click on the web button and then click on services, and you scroll down, there's a little article I made about why I typically do not do power supplies and analog boards, at least not right now. I am currently not in a situation where I am set up for this. And the problem is simply that there's just too many variables there. And if I was able to order in bulk or stuff like that, that would be great. But right now, for each power supply revision, I know a lot of the stuff is documented out there. The capacitor values and the voltages is not what I'm concerned with. It is the actual size and width and height and lead space of those capacitors because you can get a LC power supply and get all the caps and then boom, one of the caps is too tall. So what do you do? You order more. And you know, the shipping is like what, five, 10 bucks each time? So it's not really that fun in my opinion. It's much easier with the Macintosh uh, boards that I have because they each take like a handful of the same capacitors. That's that rant done. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, solder on the header pins to the blue pill. Uh, what the heck is the header pins? Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on. Let's 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 get a, a better understanding of this. Let's read it a few times. Uh, da, 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 da. So there's there's no picture, but it says correct orientation is having the USB connector of the blue pill should be over the SD card holder. Okay. So, like this, okay, and then I assume we need all of these headers in place, okay, okay, okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I said this in the last stream, and I, I hate to be a broken MP3, but I come from a documentation background, and sometimes I'm just very, um, how should I say, impatient. And if there's not a picture, I go, what? How? I don't understand. I, and I get confused easily. Okay, so the headers go there. That's easy to understand. So I'm going to be putting some flux on the back here. Long legs down, usually. Well, then. Look at me running my big fat mouth. <laughs> okay, so the long legs go down into the socket, then. Follow the pretty picture, Stephen, you dork. Um... Well, I can't, you can't really see it from the picture, but... So it would be something along the lines of this. And it's very blurry. I apologize. I can't zoom out further in this microscope. I'm just going to show you in the little view here. And we'll, we'll transition back to the, the, the main camera here. Just so you can see. So this is how your little sandwich is assembled. So you have the little blue pill Arduino thingy up here. And if my camera wants to focus, that would be fantastic, but it probably won't. And then we have these little yellow headers with the long side... The long pin's facing down, apparently, is the, the way to go. So, yes, yes, make sure everything fits nicely before I do anything. I'm going to hold that blue pill on there as a guide as I secure the bottom pins into place, at least. Um, just to make sure that, that they are secure. And uh, then we'll go from there. So... As he looks at the chat to make sure he's not making any stupid mistakes. So I'm not going to switch to the microscope just yet, just because I'm, I'm just doing this really quickly. So I'm just putting some solder on the legs here. Just, uh, you know, two on each side, on the left and the right. Just to make sure it's it's steady, so I could remove this and then get to work on the rest of them. And there's there's tons of stuff you could do with these little Arduino boards. Um, like I said, I only have the one, and uh, actually no, I have two. I have one that controls uh, an LED array of Christmas lights that I have on the outside of the house. There's a little uh, Arduino Mega clone or whatever they're called. And it's just running a program that tells the lights to flash in a particular pattern, which is really cool. I got the idea from my brother Dan. Thank you, Dan. 
and uh, you help me out with that. So. Okay, well, I, I'm going to use this with a bunch of machines, but we'll figure out which one I want to use it with. Okay, so this is not Sabran. We just had that as a placeholder here. But we have all the pretty pins there. You can't see what I'm looking at because I didn't do the thingy right. Okay, so here we go. We have all the pretty pins on here. So the short side is facing up. And the long pins are coming through the back here. So there we go. Yeah, well, me no instructions follow good, so we'll figure that out as we go along. <laughs> okay, so oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Now I'm on this awful recap of Mac website. How did I get there? Clicking on the bookmark bar. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's take a look at this. Um, ba -ba Consider adding the headers to the board if you want the blue pill to be removable. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. We'll, we'll have it removable, I guess. Um, okay, so we have to solder this, then it's off to the resistor bits. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah. We're going to continue soldering the pins on the bottom here. So this is going to be a bit repetitive, but that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to add plenty of flux here. Just so we have no issues or anything wanting to stick where it's supposed to. Flux is magic. It helps you solder. That's really all you have to say about it. It's fantastic. So, uh, Cue the, the uh, 80s royalty-free music that I usually use on YouTube. And we're out of focus here. There we go. We'll be like, uh, you know, one of those uh, fancy YouTubers that... Uh, actually do scripted videos and be like, yeah, here's here's the the thing I'm doing. It's like boom, 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 or something like that. And you you know what I mean, right? Right? Crickets, crickets, crickets. That was a bad job you did there, Stephen. Why are you doing such a bad job? Let's move the fan so the solder fumes are not blowing in my face. That would be nice. And since this board is, is sort of teeter-tottering here, I have to use one finger to hold it down. Just to make sure. And we're gonna re we're gonna go over this stuff again. You know, we're gonna make sure that you know it's actually holding on there and the, the joints are good. I'm just gonna go one by one as as uh, quickly as I can here. Can, cam, cam, I can't speak today. Uh, I did a Patreon uh, exclusive video, which is actually uh, just posted to Patreon before I came down here. And, uh, my gosh, I had a hard time just getting through words. And I, I have some scripts to try and record and stuff like that. And it's, it's hard, man. Words are hard. Okay. The fumes got to him. Yes, they did. Mmm, fumes. Breathing in fumes is bad. Do not do. This has been a PSA from that Mac84 guy who makes videos too long. one's already done but words are hard okay so let's continue our soldering shenanigans on this side he tipped the board the wrong way and the angle of this always makes it look a little concerning like if it's not actually Making contact? Well, it might not be. Yeah, let me, uh, let's see if I can hold. <laughs> this is going to be difficult. <laughs> let's, let's try it the other way around. Mac84 learned soldering live! As Bruce shakes his head. Bruce is like, I've done 50 of these already.
said, Mac, I have no idea where you get these wild stories from. Yay, and no more soldering for the rest of the... Oh, wait. I'm doing a whole thing of solder. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, learn how to battery. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gotta learn how to battery, folks. You gotta learn how to battery. All right, let's take a look at this beautiful job I did here in quotes. Air quotes. Let's see if I screwed anything up here. This has been looking at solder join music. Yeah, the solder fumes finally got to me. Sorry, folks. It happens to the best of us. All looks good. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, we were all too busy farting around and doing other things to do Mac Yak, so uh, we had to skip today. We'll be back next week. All right, solder on the resistor. Oh wait, no, I have to. <laughs> I have to actually plug the uh, Arduino into this thing, don't I? And it has to go, has to go on like that. So now I have to solder all these points. No, I'll just let it free roam, right? That's good. That's good enough, right? Just the making loose connections. Just loose, loose connections. Well, looks like garbage. Well, thanks. I'll just send all my work to you, and you can do it for free, and much, much better than I can, right? That's how that works. <laughs> sure, it might work. <laughs> oh, Bruce. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Learn how to battery. <laughs> oh, come on. You want you want to get all the way around the other edge. Come on. Yeah, we go. now you're happy. Yep. Yeah, that's a, these things are a little light, so they're a little easy to push around if you are uh, not paying enough attention. Wow, that's way too much solder. See, I'm, I'm not paying attention here. We're gonna have to redo some of these because you're not paying attention, Steven. You put too little solder on that one. You put too much solder on that one. Dislike, unsubscribe, blah, blah, blah. What am I not paying for this content for anyway? How dare this man take up his free time and have fun making videos on the internet. No one's allowed to have fun. Serious business only. I absolutely uh, have a, a good chuckle when people honestly think that by commenting in my whoops that's way too much uh, commenting in my videos of like oh you're laughing too much or you're you're doing this too much you got to stop like yeah I'm gonna listen to you yeah that no yeah you you have a choice if you click on if you click on my video and you watch it um, you kind of know what you're getting into and if you don't like it well. There's a billion other videos on YouTube, pal. You can watch whatever you'd like. Doesn't have to be mine. I mean, hey, you want to turn my videos off and, and uh, I mean, turn them on and uh, mute it. That's cool. I still get the views anyway. <laughs> and let me tell you, pal, when you hit that dislike button, it actually counts as uh, engagement. So it doesn't matter to YouTube either way if you click like or dislike. It hurts my feelings greatly, of course.
But uh, where were we? Oh yeah, we're soldering stuff, which looks like garbage, I'm sure. But whatever. Making a connection. It's probably okay. Why is he redoing them? Because he's unsure of his decisions that he's made in his life. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's everyone doing today? I'm being extra silly today. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully you had a good day. It is Thursday, at least here in the United States on my side of the world. It is currently Thursday. That means tomorrow is Friday. And that means, that means, almost to the weekend. We almost made it. We almost made it. It's all fun and games until you realize, I have another one of these to put together. <laughs> and just like that, the fleeting moment of me thinking, hmm, I should build these and sell them myself, goes right out the window. <laughs> if I wanted to pay for your shoddy soldering work, I would not pay for your shoddy soldering work. Yeah, hot. Solder hot. Fire bad. And you've been just looking at my forehead the entire time. <laughs> Oops. Got 45 people here. Okay, good. I'm not scaring away too many people with my nonsensical jibber jabber. All right, let's put the solder iron back in its little holster. Hope it doesn't turn lava hot. And let's take a closer look at my uh, quote-unquote work here. Doop -a -doop -a -doo, doop -a -doop -a -doo, nothing is bridging. Everything looks okay. Try the other side. This one's too wide. This one's too short. This one's just right. Maybe, well, we'll see when we fire it on and everything explodes. He's <laughs> showing all the classic sons. Smash that like button. Please subscribe to Brankus Creation so I do not have to pay him for saying his phrase. All right, so after we do that, now we put on the little uh, resistor pins. So those are uh, the, these packs, rather. Those are these little orangey dealies, for lack of a better word. Let me get uh, up close to show you where they go. Uh, they sit right there. There's a, There's four spots for them. So these are to control, I guess, the SCSI termination or some fancy business like that. Don't take my word for it. And so we have a bunch of them that we have to put on here. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm just having fun. It's been a long week, trust me. A long week. All right, so we are going to hold these in with one hand. And I'm going to just put a dab of flux on a few of these pins to hold them in. And we'll do some quick and dirty soldering. I assume it doesn't matter the orientation that these go in, which is good, maybe. Uh, oh, <laughs> hold please. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dork and I put them in the opposite way. It does matter, I think. All right, so let's match it up to the picture. The picture has writing on one side, so let's flip these around before everyone yells at me in the chat. The chat's delayed, so I know it's coming. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. That is totally unnecessary, but I greatly appreciate your support. Eep! Thank you very much, Mike, from Mike's Mac Shack. Go, uh, go check out Mike's channel, Mike's Mac Shack. He has a shack of Macs. Well, it's not really a shack, it's a house. But don't let that uh, nonsensical gibberish fool you. He has excellent videos. And he does old vintage PC stuff too, which is really cool. So be sure to check that out. Um, oh, these ones have to go the other way. Hold on. Hold, please. So it does matter the orientation that you put these in. Don't listen to what I said 30 seconds ago. Why are you talking like Mayo Queen Bee? All right, so let's put these in correctly. All right, so... As the diagram on the GitHub page shows you, uh, 
the side closest to the SD card has to have the text on the uh, little resistor nets facing forward towards this side of the card where my finger is wiggling here. Then on the other side, away from the SD card slot in the USB port, the text is facing this way, so towards the, my face here. Uh, so you just make sure you have that correct, otherwise you're going to screw it up. House, apartment, shack, um, den, uh, words, whatever, dwelling, warehouse, words mean things, cat factory, <laughs> welcome to Mike's cat factory, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's why you have to subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack, he has a bunch of kitties, and they are very often in his videos because wh which cat would ever be like, oh, you're doing something? Let me just leave you alone. That's not how cats work. Learn to cat. That's not how cats work. All right, so I'm just, I'm just putting some very quick little dabs of solder on the back of these legs here just to keep them in place, and then we're going to fix them all up now. Okay. There are two types of the things. Oh. <laughs> Let's guess to see if I got them correct. Maybe. <laughs> this is what happens. You don't pay attention. It's a good thing I didn't solder them all in, huh? Alright, so we have... Uh, what's the difference here? 221, 221, 2042, 2042. Oh, I see. Okay, let's see if I actually got it right. That'd be funny. That'd be really funny. If I if I actually got it right, uh, one half I did. Hey, how about that? Yeah, so I have three three one in the right spot, and okay, I just gotta swap the other two. So I made I made a boo boo. Hey boo boo, you made a mistake. That's when our friend Solderwick comes out to play. And thankfully, I just put in four pins, so. Learn how to read the instructions. Learn how to battery. Looks like I didn't get that one far away. Sorry, guys. Let me just uh, undo the uh, crummy work that I did. Believe it or not, it's much harder following instructions while you're trying to entertain people on YouTube than it seems. <laughs> I haven't quite worked the kinks out yet, if you couldn't tell. So that one's almost out there, so let's uh, just continue working on that. <laughs> yeah, but that would require me thinking ahead and planning. What is this, a job? No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> if you can't tell I'm being sarcastic, this, <laughs> this guy's really mean. Okay, so, that should maybe come out, possibly, maybe, possibly, yep, just trying, that one leg is just really stuck on there, so I'm just going to heat it up as I wiggle it, I don't have a uh, desoldering gun yet, I'd love to get one, there we go, I'll just get the other side with my little tiny fingers, Must be so exciting to watch because you have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, can I bend that pin? How did I? How did, I thought that was taken out of it. Hold, please. Ha! 
How did I manage to do that? That's fantastic. <laughs> I've managed to like get it soldered in a weird spot. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's just uh, get the other one out of there too. It's much easier when there's not two of them just sitting right next to each other. And we'll continue with this in a moment. Meanwhile, if you have one of these, I'd love to hear what Macintosh you're actually using them in. Or if you're using them in a PC or anything like that. And this doesn't have to do, just be for the blue SCSI adapter. For the, let's say, the RAS SCSI adapter. Or the SCSI 2SD adapter. What are some of the Macs that, that you use them for? Or if you don't have one yet, if you order one, or if you're going to order one, what Macs would you install them in? I want to know that. The Power Mac G7. It gives me all the Gs. That's all I need, baby. Trying to wiggle this one out of here now, too. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> the problem is, I can't really get a good grip on these without my tweezers, which are over here. How about that? Macintosh LC and a 6100, those are good choices. Um, now, do these do these support the Power Max yet? I, I remember reading um, that that was something that was in progress, but uh, the individuals who are working on these projects, some of them are in the chat today. So please feel free to correct me and tell me, shut up, Stephen. You are wrong. And I will do just that. We're almost out of the woods here. And this let this be a lesson to you folks. Read the darn instructions. Don't do what Mac 84 do. Read the instructions. That one's really on there. It always it always seems like one little pin. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Alright, sorry about that. Let me catch up on the chat. I'm sure you're all uh, bashing me while I have my head turned. Uh, 50% chance of getting it light. <laughs> right, yes. Uh... <laughs> yes, I, I read all the important comments after I screwed it up. So, yay. Go team. Alright, so let's not screw this up again. So there's the 331, and then there's the 221. So the 330 goes this way as it's marked on the darn board if I would have bothered to actually read it correctly and just bend this pin correctly and uh, let's just clean up some of the, the solder that was on there there's just some stuff I can wick away here real quick so reading is fun make sure you do it and follow those instructions or you could waste 15 minutes of your life trying to undo your your mistakes There's a little solder on the back of it. That's why it's not moving anywhere. Let's get that done. And then we'll go back to the microscope view. You can see me do this properly. How about that? That was a fun detour, wasn't it? Define fun. Well. Hilarious for those who aren't doing it, let's say. Let's say that. Okay, so let's make sure we're actually doing this correctly again. Okay. Just 
going to heat the back of this just to make... Th there's this one uh, thing that has a little solder in it, and it's not coming quietly. So we're just going to heat the back of this up and hopefully just wiggle it in there. It's a, a technical term used here on Mac 84. Wiggle it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a hard drive emulator. If you would read the full title of the YouTube description, I know reading is hard, trust me. I did not read the instructions, so who am I to say about reading things? But it is a hard disk emulator for a SCSI based Macintosh. Well, I guess you could do it on PCs too, maybe. Um, I'm, uh, I'm definitely using it on Mac, so that's where my mindset is. Up if I clean the tip of the soldering iron here. And actually got some solder on it, because it's very hard to solder without any solder. I'll be. Sorry, folks. There we go. All right. Let's continue with the last one. Did I put the wrong one in there again? Wow. All right. I'm going <laughs> to... So this is what happens when you put the two things next to the desk and you're you're messing with it and you don't pay attention. And whenever I put my put pressure on this board it just wobbles around so it's not helping me keep track of things here. And everyone's laughing. They're going that silly Mac 84. When will he learn? got this on there pretty good again I wasn't trying I wasn't trying to do that intentionally I really wasn't <laughs> so I got the orientation correct at least the other side is good because gosh if I had to do this again and again well this is my first time putting together the kit and I'm I'm bound to make mistakes I mean that's what happens here at Mac 84. We learn from our mistakes, hopefully. And if I don't learn, at least somebody else does. So that's that's the beauty of it, really. That somebody is learning. <laughs> oh, mercy. Alright, let's not screw this up. That one's the bad one. We don't want to put that there. That goes over there. This one goes over here. It's just one of those things where this this will look all blurry under the microscope, so I'm just trying to fix it up here. There we go. Of course, that pin is slightly bent due to me abusing it. Sorry, Mr. Pin. I did not mean to bend you the wrong way. See, if Dana was here, he'd be he'd be doing all sorts of good voices. I can't do good voices. And I remind the MacCat guys of that every single time I try and do a silly uh, accent. Not that it stops me from doing it. I just... I know I'm not good at it. Oh, 
This is uh, it's just one of those things where I bent the pin slightly out of place, so I have to just like be very careful that I don't break it off. Okay. We're almost there. You said that a half hour ago. I meant it a half hour ago. It helps when they're they're all clean and there's no solder on the on the bits. Okay, there we go. This is like a baby's first soldering project. <laughs> Everything that can go wrong will go wrong here on Mac 84. All right, good. That's finally in place. My goodness. You'd think I'd never soldered anything before. Keep the comments to yourself. <laughs> All right, proper orientation, excellent. Now on to the last one. Again. <laughs> uh, I pity the fool who don't read the instructions. And that fool is currently me, so I'm pitying myself at this point in time. Just in case you were wondering, that that that's what's going on here. Okay, and then that is that. Excellent. Okay, now we could now we could solder them all in correctly here. Let's uh, move you to a different view where you're not just seeing me roll my eyes at myself. Okay, so let's get this done. You said that an hour ago. I meant it an hour ago. That's the same joke you used before. Silence. So what's absolutely fantastic about these devices is if anyone is just getting into the vintage Mac scene, you may know that SCSI hard drives are a little more expensive than, you know, older SCSI hard drives. It's a move. It's a little more expensive than you would hope they would be. And it's not that hard drives are bad or anything. They're great. But these days... Uh, the reliability of those old SCSI hard drives is basically non-existent. Um, they could they could work, and they could not work, and that's a gamble you take because I mean these things are getting up there at age. I have to find a better way to balance this because it's wobbling around a little bit. So let's use this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's uh, plug this header in just to balance things out a little bit. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to make sure pin one is there. There it is. See, I, I know how to do that at least. And we'll just make sure that this uh, 50 pin SCSI connector here is just flush and that will help us with the rest of the project. All right. I keep putting too little solder on the end of this uh, tip here, and it just makes extra work for me. Okay, great. Let's get moving here. So we have all these pretty uh, resistor pins that we just have to solder in place. Let's adjust the focus here so it is not terribly out of focus for all of you, and you can see all the mistakes I'm about to make, because that's what we like to do here, give you the true experience. Hey, Galaxy, good to see you. Um, Yes, notch is is marked on the board. Is out, is as, as marked. <laughs> I hope you weren't going to say, 
<laughs> oh, it's it's actually the opposite of how the how it is on the board. That would be a bad. Well, you could easily get a uh, adapter to go from you know fifty pin to DB fifty uh, the DB twenty five if you wanted to. Um, I'm sure technically that shouldn't be an issue. Hey, Kale, don't worry about it. We're just soldering up a storm here, putting together a blue SCSI adapter. For anybody who's just joining us, hello. We are putting together this blue SCSI adapter. I made some uh, little mistake but we're But we're, we're past that. We're on the, the road to success now. Awesome. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be really cool, Eric. Because uh, I'm sure there are there are individuals who would want that uh, connectivity, you know, right to the back of a, a machine or something like that, or daisy chaining it off of another device, etc. Oopsie. We made a solder bridge because the, the, Stephen did the bad thing. Well, fix it, don't worry. Alright, let's make sure we didn't make any uh, more mistakes. How about that? We got uh, some crud there. We'll just get that out of the way. Oh yes, I have I have one of those too that basically makes the Mac 128K a Mac Plus. So it'd be cool, be cool to use it with that. But uh, yeah, it shouldn't be trouble. Did I expose some copper there? I did. Oof. Well, we could put some. Have to get some blue solder mask. We could fix that up later. That should be okay. All right, everything looks good. I think. Yay. All right, so we are back in action here. Let's read the next steps of the instructions very carefully. Oh, boy. It would have saved you a lot of time, Stephen. Solder on the termination jumpers and place the jumpers to enable termination. Oh, okay. I see. So we have... Where is that referring to, actually? We have... Where's the termination jumpers? Oh, I see. Okay. It, it's the pictures below there. Alright, so I would have to just basically uh, cut these and make sure we install those correctly. So they are going like this. Well, I'd have to cut it. But you'd have one like that and one like that. Right. Yes. Okay. That's, I believe, how it is. The beautiful blue scuzzy. It's so beautiful. Oh. Well, that went up and then it went down. And I have no idea where that went. Absolutely no idea where that went. I'm gonna go find it because that's gonna just like be hanging out in my basement for the next like five years. So. Let's see if we can find where that went. Sorry. Ugh. Ma! 
mind the noise, or don't mind the noise rather. I actually found it. I actually found it. It went flying, but I found it. All right, let's clean off the dust from that and let's assemble these on the board, so. Now let's do the one with the jumper first. That's probably a little easier to hold on. gonna put a little blob of solder on there it's not gonna show the best under the microscope so I'm just gonna do it uh, with my fingers here Okay, now we're going to do the other one. So this is the uh, little thingy there. Matching just like how the picture is. I just had to angle my iron with a certain way to get that on. Okay, great. <laughs> they really call them jumpers. Oh, that's my kind of humor. All right, cool. So we have those soldered on. We have our little resistor packs here. We have the blue pill here soldered on. We have this soldered on. What is next? Well, what's next is the power connector here. Uh, and the 50 pin SCSI adapter, it's, it's loosely soldered on, it's not fully soldered on. So, let's make sure we are installing this power connector correctly. I believe the orientation is like that. So the back of that is facing into the board and the part without that uh, back support is facing the edge of the board. Excellent. Alright, so Again, since this is a little tall, it's not going to show up great on the microscope, so I'm just going to hold it in the hands here. And because I'm doing that, let's transition this to a bigger view so you could uh, get a, a different scenery for a few seconds as I, as I do this. So, make sure it's nice and straight. So you don't want that connector wobbling around any. Let's just reinforce that a little bit. I'm just uh, this this plug is going to get some unplugging and plugging action. So we want to make sure that is nice and solid. Excellent. Okay, cool. So we have that installed. How about that? Okay. Optional, yeah, so that is optional apparently, but uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think that's it. We've we've used up all the pieces so I believe we just need to solder the bottom here of this SCSI connector and We'll be all set. So let's load this up with some flux
and let's get to work finishing this up. And then we get to play the game of where did Steven put the SD cards he bought like last year? I love playing that game. It's always so fun. It's always so fun. Yeah, I believe this will run. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, the people in the chat will correct me, I'm sure. I believe this will run off termination power. Um, that connector there is optional if your machine, uh, like some of the Macintosh Plus systems, at least with the SCSI USC adapter, uh, required external power. So. Ooh, there's a mod for the plus to make it work? That sounds interesting. As I spin the board around the table. Poor little board. You've been through a lot today, buddy. And uh, if my soldering skills are any attestment to this, this is exactly why you should always check your work. Uh, I'm never claiming to be the, the best person with these kits or soldering in general. Um, when you're working on this stuff, you want to follow the instructions. You want to double check your work even though you're like, no, I did that correctly. You want to make sure before you plug some voltage through that thing. And that's whether you're working on a little kit like this or you're working on a machine. You want to make sure. Right, so we only have uh, a few dozen, a dozen or so pins to go here, so. Last two pins. Can he do it? He better. Yay! Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so now let's inspect our work to make sure we didn't mess anything up. How about that? Excellent. That's very appropriate, Tom, because that will save me some time. I know uh, Bruce sent me an image or two as well, but it's always good to have more images because I'm going to be testing both of these systems out on a few different Macs. So it will be excellent. There's a hair there. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, that looks all good. Let's double check everything else here. I don't see... Any problems? Oh, yep, yeah, I see a problem. That wasn't done right. I don't know how I missed that, but let's tidy that up there. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I did that good, but nope. I gotta learn to battery better. I really gotta learn to battery. Okay. <laughs> oh no, the connector is backwards. Well, this has been a fun stream. See you later, guys. <laughs> Just jump off. Oh, uh, jump off a bridge. Oh boy. Okay, let's see. Everything else looks suspect. Everything uh, on there tight. Nothing wiggling around. Where's those? Uh, these guys here. Okay, so let's uh, clean this up. Yes, uh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to use a basilisk if I had to. Um, but let's let's do it this way. Um, I'm going to, well, the way that uh, people are 
su suggesting. Oh, words. Um, where's my alcohol? Not that alcohol. The <laughs> cleaning alcohol. Um, oh, it's on the other side of the basement because I was cleaning a Power Mac. I'll be right back in like 10 seconds. Well, more like 40 seconds. I'm not going to run. as he slams a knee on a keyboard. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clean this thing up. So, we'll do just that. And we're going to find out which of these bins that I've placed on the floor that I've stashed away my toothbrush in. Here it is. <laughs> Hey guys, found the alcohol. <laughs> um, where's that little cup I usually pour this in? Oh well. That should be fine. We have a little fan. Blow, fan, blow. <laughs> Bar the toothbrush from upstairs. It saves you money. One out of ten dentists recommend flux in your daily flossing and brushing. <laughs> oh, boy. You definitely do not want to brush with this stuff. No siree. And hello everyone who's uh, just been joining or has uh, joined in the, the past uh, half hour or whenever. Uh, welcome to the stream. I assume I might have to clip off some of these connectors in order to make this fit in here correctly. It would, it would help if I put it the opposite way around. Oh no, I don't have to. Great. Excellent. That saves me a lot of time. Okay, so we're just, just drying this off a little bit. Um, making sure nothing is... is lacking in any way. Now I do need to get an SD card. The one I was using before has stuff on it. I don't want to use that one. Uh, I do have a little bag uh, of SD cards. I believe they're in my backpack. So I will go grab those. So we're going to just let this dry for a few seconds, but I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to switch to the Be Right Back screen. You're going to groove to some music for like a minute or two and I'll be right back. Use this time to go to the bathroom, get a drink, uh, yeah, so I will be right back. Please stay. Thank you.
Oh no! He has an Apple II instead of a Macintosh! Maybe that was the only photo that was suitable to use that wasn't with the desk covered with crap. <laughs> Apple II forever! Alright, so, let's see. I have a bunch of SD cards here. I have no clue what's on them, because... Yeah. Uh, they're all 32 gigs, which is just massive. I mean, that's just too much. I have a 16 gig one here. Let's see what's on this guy, because I don't know. I'm plug it in, and maybe OBS will freeze. Who knows? Hope not, because that would be bad. That would be very bad. Uh, let's move the keyboard so we can actually use the keyboard here, as our exciting adventures take us here. Uh, 11 gigs available. What the heck is on this card? Oh, okay. Oh, there's not that uh, much on here, is there? Yeah, so I'm going to copy all the data off of this. Just give me a moment. Let me connect to a server. I clicked the disconnect button, so I know I get to type in my credentials again. I know this makes for ex exciting stuff. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just uh, put this in pictures. We can do, uh, come on, load up. There we go. This is uh, May 13th, 2021. So I just want to date that so I know what's there. And we're going to copy four gigs over the network. It'll take two minutes. So there we go. Uh, yes, I heard, I saw that. XFAT is uh, really, really fast with this. So Bruce's uh, comparisons were, were off the charts with this thing. So um, I will uh, be doing that, formatting it as XFAT. Well, hello, everybody uh, who just joined. Matthew, uh, we have uh, uh, P-H-R-A-X. There we go. Frax, maybe. Uh, retro computers and game consoles. Hello. Uh, need to learn how to do editing. Also need to do a live stream sometime. Well, you know do whatever you want <laughs> um uh, editing is is uh, look i've been editing videos since like 1998 or 1999 it slowly grows on you i'm not saying i'm an expert or anything i'm just saying you pick up a lot of things along the way and uh you know if if you're struggling in one way or another uh just i mean there's so many resources these days youtube instead of like reading books or anything like that uh i'm running a uh, a version of mac os 10 server so i just have um, there's actually some X serves. You can't see them behind me. Um, there's an Intel one, an old Power Mac G5 one, but that's not what I'm copying to you right now. Uh, I'm copying to my desktop Mac Pro, which is upstairs and has a bunch of external drives that are, uh, you know, backed up to each other and everything. So whenever I want to save data, let's say I'm, I'm getting a disk or a SD card or something like that, and I want to erase it, I just dump everything up there. All the stuff up on that machine is always backed up, so I don't have to worry about it. And, you know, then I can erase the media that I have. So, happy Thursday, Ron! And... I have to give a good shout out to Ron. If you have not subscribed to Ron's computer videos, what are you waiting for? Go do it. Uh, search Ron computer, Ron's computer videos on YouTube. Uh, he did some great stuff with his Apple IIe card recently. He's been playing around with a lot, a lot of cool stuff there. And uh, he had the audacity to label his microphone that says Mac 84 on it. So see, you, look, look to see which video he did that in because it's really funny. <laughs> I did not try Retrospect yet. Um, I have the floppies for it. I just did not do it. Now, tip for everybody, 99% of the time when I'm tinkering with this stuff, I'm live streaming. So if you didn't see it on a live stream yet, it probably didn't happen. But that's something I still want to play around with. Okay, I had a friend pick up an Intel Xer for me at the VCF Swap Me. I bet you he got it for 50 bucks, and I bet you he got it from Rick. Um, da -da 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 -da. And your Tangerine iMac from him next month. And I, I saw that iMac. If that was the one that uh, was at the VCF Swap Meet, Tom, I saw that iMac and I, I touched the back of the XServe there. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that increases the value or decreases it. But, yeah, I uh, that was, that was I, I was tempted, trust me. I But, you know, I need another XServe like I need a hold head probably. All right, so let's erase this SD card. It's a 16 gig card. Let's erase this as XFAT. And we're just going to do it. Yeah, we're just going to make uh we go make sure all the data is copied off of that and erase it excellent we have another subscriber to ron's computer videos and please also subscribe to the following channels brian here is from brian's computer retreat excellent channel and mike is here from mike's mac shack excellent channel 
And Brankus Creations is here from Brankus Creations. Well, his real name is Bruce, but Brankus Creations is his YouTube channel. Subscribe to those, please. Uh, again, Mike's Mac Shack, Brian's Computer Retreat, and Brankus Creations. Excellent work that they do on their channels. So, I have a SCSI 2SD, a SCSI 2SD, blue SCSI adapter, that is already assembled. And, oh, and I'm sorry, Greg, didn't wear that you need more subscribers because you have like 10 billion of them. Subscribe to Ruck K Mods if you want to see Greg occasionally tinker with Mac stuff, but sometimes he just talks about trucks now. I don't know. He's, he, he, solder fumes must have been getting to him. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love Retrospect. It's where I used to back up my systems on my network. Awesome. Okay, so we're just going to be uh, downloading some things here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, let's... Um, Make sure we erase this disk correctly. I'm just seeing Tom's note uh, here, so let's make sure I'm doing that. I know you can't see it. Oh, I'm dragging all sorts of things in the wrong places on my system here. Open up disk utility again. Um, make sure it's MBR and not GPT or anything like that. Yes, I believe it's master boot record. Let's double check. Uh, maybe. Uh, I hate the new disk utility. Get info. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. How do I? What, what's, oh, I have to go to the view. I have to show all devices. Yeah, darn thing. Yeah, master boot record. Okay, we're all good. Okay, so let's download one of these images here. Uh, so Mike's channel is called Mike's Mac Shack, and Bruce's channel is called Brankus Creations. And I'm, I'm going to spell that. There we go. I paste in links, but I'm a little too busy to do that right now. Sorry. Okay, so we have a few things that, uh, a few of these disk images that are available to us. Um, so Tom sent over some links. I'm going to download uh, one of them here. And there's a special way that you have to um, download, uh, not download, but <laughs> name the file. Otherwise, um, the the SD card won't, uh, won't work. So, well, it, it, it just won't display correctly. So let me just download that. I'm sorry, I'm just clicking around here. Uh, we're going to try the system. Ooh, 7.1. I want to do that one. So let's download that. Ooh, my computer's being weird. Don't don't crash, please. Please? Okay. Cool. All right. So uh, we're just going to be putting... Um, we're just going to be putting an thingy on here. So I want to give a big shout out to Eric, who's uh, hopefully still here. He's the, the creator of this whole blue scuzzy shebang. So, I mean, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> and uh, Tom's the one who sold me the scuzzy 2SD. Uh, I keep saying that. I'm going to be saying that for a long time. The blue scuzzy adapter. Uh, so Eric, thank you very much. And everybody who supported this effort and tested them or messed around with these things and got them to work on different machines and wrote the documentation and did the testing of the hardware and everything. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> and so thank you very much for helping me out uh, during this stream and on the Open SCSI Discord uh, server. So I'm going to actually paste in a link to that. Uh, let me click on the invite button and we're going to copy this and I'm going to put a link to the Open SCSI Discord here. Open Retro SCSI, sorry. Discord here. There we go. And if you want to join this amazing group of folks on Discord, please go ahead and do that. There are an awesome group of folks. I'm there. Bruce is there. A bunch of other folks are there. Eric's there. Tom's there. Please feel free to join. Excellent stuff. Uh, yes, there are there are size limitations, but I'm not going to worry about that. The system I'm using will not, <laughs> not need more than two gigabytes of stuff. Okay, so uh, I have the SD card here. I'm going to drag and drop an image onto it. We're going to see just how fancy this is. Well, thank you very much, Ron. Okay. So that's copying. And now we're expanding the zip file, because I assume you need to do that. Again, I should bring out these instructions. <laughs> we're doing it live. Okay, so place a hard disk image in the root of an XFAT uh, SD card and name it properly. Okay, so we'll make sure that's named correctly. 
Uh, so yes, this is. Okay, so this is SCSI ID one. And uh, the LUN is set to one. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, set to zero. So that's good. And the sector size is fine. Okay, so we should be all good here. Um, I double clicked it on the SD card, so it's expanding from the SD card. It's probably stressing the, the SD card out. So let me just go ahead and expand that on the SSD of my machine here and then just drag it over. Which I still having problems with. I, I'm probably running an old system. Let me just open uh, the unarchiver, let it do its job. There we go. It's working away there. Anybody have any questions about uh, these fantastic adapters? Be sure to check out the Discord channel that I linked in there. Uh, they all they also have uh, the Rascuzzi adapter in there as well, which is fantastic. Uh, okay, so we have our HDA image. Oh, that's two gigabytes. Okay. Well, there's plenty of space in there. That's fine. So we're gonna just drop that onto the SD card there. That explains why it was taking a while to unzip. Yeah, exactly, Jay. That's. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, you should not be doing that. Let's do the other thing. So what machine am I going to use this in? I know what I, what machine I'm going to use this in. Is, is it over there still? Yes, it is. Okay. I can still do it then. Uh, I'm going to use my Macintosh 2 SI. Why? Because I just recapped the power supply, so it shouldn't crap out on me. And because I feel like it. And because I was using a, a SCSI 2SD adapter in there before and... I'd like to use this one instead. Oh, thank you very much, Ron, uh, for all your three-hour stream <laughs> after Bruce's four-hour stream needs. Yes, I have the tendency to uh, follow Bruce's streams uh, and, and start a new stream after he does a stream, but maybe it'll be the opposite way around, huh, Bruce? Huh? Huh? Bruce is like, I have way too much work to do. What are you getting me into? <laughs> so um, there are a few advantages to the Blue Scuzzy. Um, you could just drag and drop. So, well, let me explain this. So, and this is, this is going to be just, um, <laughs> used to be known for his eight hour streams. Yeah. Thanks Jay. So this is just going to be in a nutshell. There's a lot of little, um, nuances to this. So, so take this with a grain of salt and do your own research, but essentially the SCSI 2SD adapters that you're familiar with, maybe like this one here, this is a 5.1 uh, right here. And so this is nice because it has the 50 pin connector here and you got your 25 pin <laughs> connector here. This takes uh, full size SD cards, which I like because I have a bunch of these one and two gigabyte cards that have just been sitting around my house collecting dust. I actually have a use for them now. Um, however, the version six does not like those. It does not like those older cards. You need like newer cards. Um, trust me, I've tried and I've contacted them about it. But um, yeah, so this is that. And here is the Blue Scuzzy. So the Blue Scuzzy is smaller. You can see that. Now, they don't all support the same systems just at this time. Um, still being worked on. The Blue Scuzzy is very new. This has been out for a while. Um, but essentially, to get this to work is a little bit tricky on a vintage Mac because what you have to do is you have to essentially program the Scuzzy 2SD adapter with the Scuzzy ID. And the, you do this through an interface on your computer. There's a little program you run. And you basically configure this to the SCSI ID you want, the partitions you want, the sizes you want. Um, there are some quirks that you have to check in there to make sure that this is going to accurately display on your system. And it can be used for PCs as well as Macs. But um, yeah, there's, there's some configurations that you have to get to make sure that this will work correctly on a Mac. And once you do that, then you have to have a... Uh, a third-party formatting utility or use Apple's utility or use a patched version of Apple's utility on an actual vintage Mac to format the card on this actual uh, that's plugged into this adapter here so that could be troublesome in its own right if you don't have a machine that can you know easily do that whereas the blue SCSI as we just did here we dragged and dropped an image file in this case it was a HDA file we just formatted an SD card, uh, you know, a 16 gig SD card as XFAT, uh, master boot record XFAT, nothing fancy about that, whereas this card is actually HFS formatted, and we'll get to the formats in a second. Uh, HFS is Mac o Macintosh, uh, Mac OS standard is what uh, it's called within the OS, and HFS is the file system that is used for that. Now, modern PCs and modern Intel Macs and modern M1 Macs have trouble writing 
to the HFS file system, and even some of the more modern machines can't even read from it. So um, with the blue SCSI adapter, all you do is format a card, and it's just an XFAT, and then you drag and drop an image file onto this. And then if you name that file in a certain way, that's going to tell it what SCSI ID and all that fun stuff. So that is what is really going to drive this here. So, oh, and I did not give you an EEP, Ron. EEP! Thank you very much, Ron. And we got another super chat. My goodness, thank you very much for your generosity from retro computers and game and consoles. Uh, thanks for all your awesome live stream videos. Well, thank you very much for watching. It, it wouldn't be much of a party without you guys, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's basically uh, some of the, the big differences there. I'm leaving out a few, but the awesome folks at the Open Retro SCSI uh, Discord, uh, I want to say forum, uh, server has plenty of more information about these devices. Uh, the Blue SCSIs are more affordable as well. They're about $25, $30 worth shipping or so, uh, where these are generally around $70 to $80 and upwards. Um, these, I think, um, there's some Power Macintosh functionality that's still being baked into them. I could be wrong again. I'm very new to this. Um, but go to the Open SCSI uh, Discord channel and you'll find out all the information there. Go to Blue... Uh, I'm sorry, scuzzy.blue.com? Is that it? Checking. Yes, go to scuzzy.blue.com uh, for more information about that as well. And the link is in the video description of this. So without further ado, let's eject this SD card and let's get this onto a vintage Mac because why, why, why not do that? Because that would be cool. All right, so we're going to eject the SD card from here. Oh, well, thank you very much, Starbuck Tech. Greatly appreciate the super chat. Eep! Thank you very much. And retro computers and game consoles, if I didn't eep you, sorry. Eep! There you go. You gotta eep yourself. And, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, not dot .com. Just scuzzy.blue is the entire URL. Okay, so we're gonna put in our 16 gig SD card here. So that is basically all of that. <laughs> You're copying each other. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad I inspired someone to be creative and, and start uh, uh, their own channel. It's fantastic. I, I wish you the best of luck. I wish you all the subscribers. Go give Retro Computers and Game Consoles a subscribe. I'm assuming their content is awesome because they have an awesome name. Uh, <laughs> your eeps are eerily consistent. Quack! There we go. So, let's get on to this. Uh, on, on with the show, rather. So, I'm going to be dragging over a vintage Mac. So, just give me a moment here. We're going to be putting this in the case because that's where it belongs. And make sure we line up the little hole here. Very cool little case with the URL there. So I didn't have to remember it. It's right there. The light shines on it correctly. If my fat fingers aren't getting away. There you go. Scuzzy.blue. Very cool. You missed a little bit, Matthew. Just a, a little bit. You might want to rewind the last hour and 50 minutes. Okay, so that's all set here. Let's get this tested. So I'm going to grab a machine and uh, hopefully this wants to work correctly. Ugh. How if I uh, move this table out of the way? Which has a bunch of crap wrapped around the light. air duster was plugged in and it uh, went for a little bit of a ride when I dragged that table over. There's a lot of crap here that I have to organize and put in bigger bins and so on, but we're not going to worry about that today. Here we go. Here is our lovely Macintosh 2SI. The top of the case is over there. I'm not bringing it over because we don't need the top of the case right now. We're just going to be firing this thing on. Oh, well, thank you very much, William. That's very much appreciated. Eep! <laughs> um, that, it will, that will surely go to more accessories and flux and all sorts of goodness. So I greatly appreciate that. Now, this board has been recapped. I did not ultrasonically clean this board, and I have to because there's some dust and old flux and junk on here. This is a board I, I did a long time ago. Um, so I do have to do that. But the power supply has re been recapped as well. So that is something that will help us out here. Okay. That will go to more storage bins. I actually bought some bins today. So that helps greatly. Okay, so... Let's 
some dead bugs here. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is using this SCSI cable here. And this hopefully will power that adapter because um, that would save us a lot of time. So let's point the camera down here a little bit just so you get a better idea of what I'm doing. And so this SCSI adapter, this plug rather, goes right into here. And hopefully you won't need to power it. It's going to sit All right. Well, <laughs> the SCSI cable is sort of fighting me here because it's, it's uh, notches in the opposite way that I would, would prefer it to be. That's, a, that's the cable's fault. Um, <laughs> it has a mind of its own. There we go. That actually sort of that sort of works out. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, I have to do some modifications here because I want to be able to show you the video on this machine. But the video port on here, um, I believe, outputs as the as a sync on green. Uh, and I believe this adapter, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, this will just plug into there and reverse that or change that to uh, whatever um, the LCD display I have will use. So that might help us out a little bit. So we're going to be doing that. And there's a little adapter over there I need to grab. And this will convert that adapted DB15 to VGA. So we're going to Cross our fingers, hope everything, all this stuff works. Because sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. But that's the joy of playing around with vintage computers, isn't it? All right, and I need a keyboard, which should be around here somewhere, really. A PC keyboard's behind you, not a Macintosh keyboard. We have to f just grab a keyboard over here. Okay, I have a lovely keyboard now, right here. Can't really see that, but we'll fix the camera in a second. All right, Are you referring to me, Tom, or somebody else? I am located in New Jersey, in the United States. But you already knew that, maybe, if you remembered my address from sending me the thing. Oh, Adam. <laughs> yes, Adam's in the U.S. as well, because I've uh, repaired stuff for him and shipped him things. But he'll have to tell you the rest. All right, so let's move this camera a little bit up here, and we're going to adjust this as we move forward. So, yeah, the 2SI is one of those machines that the, the video is a bit problematic if you don't uh, know what you're doing or don't have the proper adapters. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to move the microscope back ever so slightly to give us a bit more room here. Grab an ADB cable. I'm going to test start our brand new blue SCSI adapter and hopefully I didn't break anything. That would be fantastic. And I had a mouse. I have a little trackball here. I prefer a mouse. That might be a little bit easier for me to click around on on this desk. But beggars can't be choosers, can they? So, oh, there's a mouse. Ah. <laughs> there's so many wires around my desk here. It's hard for me to reach for things sometimes. Okay, so we got a mouse. Yeah, the 2SI is a beautiful machine. I wish I had another one. I only have the one. I mean, I don't need another one. These are just ramblings of a madman. Okay, <laughs> speaking of ramblings, let's get on with this. So I'm going to plug in my VGA cable here. And I have a video scaler plugged into an HDMI capture box. That sometimes likes to work, so let's hope that we'll get something out of this. Otherwise, this is gonna be a real uh, imagination type event where you have to sort of guess what's going on. All right, so let's keep the camera focused on here. Let's hope nothing blows up. I would like everything not to blow up here. And, uh, well, Bruce, you gotta, gotta wait one second. I'm gonna plug this in. And if it blows up, then you could go. I heard a click in the power supply. I'm very frightened. Bruce, if you leave, my emotional support person is just going out the window. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's uh, switch to the VGA thing here. 
Oh, does it not want to work today? Because it's being a, a cranky, cranky, cranky thing. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> so I see the screen on my LCD screen. I'm just trying to get the, uh, get this capture thing to work. Hold on. Sometimes it loves to, and other times it hates me. So just give me a moment here. Sorry, folks. This has been happening recently. And I think it's just like a USB conflict to me. Having way too many things plugged into the machine at the same time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did that do it? Come on. See, it's reacting when I push the button. Huh. Um... Yeah, let me... Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna stop streaming for a moment. Um... Just, just wait a second. I think OBS is the issue here. Sometimes it is. Um, actually, wait. Look, before I do that, let me just unplug the darn thing and plug it back in. <clears throat> Unplugging things and plugging things back in sometimes helps. Uh, but yeah, I was having this problem in another stream, and it was just driving me bonkers. And all I did was quit OBS and open it up again. And it worked. So uh, just wait one second. I'm going to stop the stream. It's going to say... Oh, it's not, it's not working. Uh, okay, so I'm back. I don't think this thing is, is working. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I unplugged it. I exited it. I opened it up again. Um, yeah, this is really annoying when this doesn't want to work because sometimes it works great really does and other times it just don't want to work so oh all right well <laughs> you got that working that's that's uh that's not the machine i wanted to show you but that works okay so maybe it's my cable here <laughs> that's a g4 mac mini we don't care about that at this moment in time do we all right let's try this nope let's try that well, it, it's working on the LCD, and, and it's split from there. So let's just see. I mean, th I've had this on other machines here. So let me just try and see. So this is either two or three. And for the ultimate test here, well, not really the ultimate test, but I had this working the other day. Uh, Unplug the VGA cord here. Sorry for the difficulties, folks. This is always the potential happenings of a live stream. So turning on a power Mac here. It, it did not boot, actually. It was at the flashing question mark. Okay, so maybe it's a sync on green adapter because this is a this is a power Mac we have plugged in there, and it's working fine. So if I unplug this from the power Mac, he's hot swapping VGA. Somebody must stop him. And we plug it into the scaler here. Yeah, the scaler doesn't like that. All right, so let's just do it the old-fashioned way, huh, folks? Sorry, just temporary. And take the camera off and we're going to move it I'm covering it so you don't get dizzy and we're gonna switch that there okay so this is what I'm currently getting on the 2CI, 2SI rather. Um, is there a little LED on the Arduino or anything like that? that? I could see if it's getting power or something. I don't see any LEDs on it, but... Oh, it, do I need to power it through USB? That's a silly question. Or maybe not. No, it would, it would be through the Molex. Uh, maybe this is just not providing power, um, <laughs> enough power. 
So maybe I have to use that uh, power jack on the Macintosh 2SI. I'm not sure. Um, it could be that this is just not providing enough SCSI termination power. Um, I really forget if I had to use the power cable when I was using the uh, SCSI 2SD adapter. I, I am not certain. LED on the blue pill should be on. Okay. You could do it over USB or Molex. Okay, because if I do it over USB, would that power the the board that's plugged into the SCSI to us into the blue SCSI adapter? Um, if so, I have a USB cable right here. That would be helpful. Um, if not, I would have to find a Molex adapter. So let me turn it on again. Let me just watch it to see if anything flickers. Yeah, I mean, I, I could maybe have a, a diode or a fuse blown on this uh, for the SCSI port, and I just don't know about it. Okay, it would work on the USB. Okay, so let's do that. Let's turn this off. And let me get the USB plug here. So I always have one plugged in, because you never know when you're going to use it, need it for either the SCSI 2SD adapter or if I'm charging something else. I always have one plugged in in the back of the desk here, so let's untangle this cable. You can't see what I'm doing here. I apologize. It's nothing too exciting. I'm just plugging in a USB micro B cable. Well, that's interesting, Bruce. All right, so let's plug that in. Okay. Uh, it would be helpful if, I, if helpful if I had a rubber band of some sort to keep this from flopping around here. I have a partial rubber band. <laughs> this is this is a, a silly setup, Stephen. This is a silly setup. You guys can't see what I'm doing here, and it's probably for the best. So just give me one moment here, and we will uh, boot this machine back up. We now have power on the blue SCSI. We have power. So maybe the 2SI has a bad fuse or something like that, and, and we'll fix that later. If I could just tie... You know what? I'll just leave it like that, because... I can't be arsed. All right, let's power it on. Okay, we didn't get a chime that time. It's a little concerning. And there we go. There's the video. Let's see if it wants to boot. Yay! <laughs> oh, you can't see. There we go. Fantastic. Oh, and I, I do apologize again for this crazy setup here. Let me try and adjust this a little bit better. Uh, that video scaler and I are going to have a talking to. Fan-freaking-tastic! Oh, it would help if I move the mouse correctly. All right, so about this Mac, look at that. System software 7.1. We have a 2 gigabyte partition here. Oh, this is cool. A bunch of games. Well, first off, we gotta enable color. Because we are on a color capable system, baby. Oh, look at all those 256 colors. This is cool. Oh, we can do a benchmark. Sure. Let's do it. Which software we're using for benchmarks? Oh, SCSI Director. Okay. I don't think I've ever used that before. <laughs> I like it. If you did not receive a printed manual, this program is... Well, that's fine. Okay. So, we want to do test. <laughs> Quantum Fireball. <laughs> oh, that's a cruel joke. <laughs> Let's test it.
<laughs> the piece of paper included counts. <laughs> we got the manual here. We're good. Set the disk cache to get an extra boost. Set disk cache to one meg to use the slow RAM for disk cache and more speed. Okie dokie. I, yeah, I have not checked out the memory settings of this machine. I think we have like 20 megs in this, though. Last I checked. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is really cool. You know, there's a very there's a very plausible satisfaction that you get from this. An undeniable satisfaction, rather, of assembling something yourself from a kit and putting it together, and by golly, it works. So thank you to... Well, that was supposed to be a thumbs up. There you go. Thank you to all the folks at Blue Scuzzy for helping me out with this. Eric and Tom and everyone on the Open Retro Scuzzy Discord channel. Thank you very much. This little, uh, little Macintosh is, uh, is puttering along here. Doing pretty good. Over one meg! <laughs> That's really cool. Hello, Steven. Thank you very much for joining the chat. We have 50 people here. Hello, everybody. Yes, yeah, so this Macintosh uh, 2SI was a machine I was using for the longest time. Uh, it actually has a 40 meg drive that still works, but, you know, 40 megabytes is a little small, and it's not that, that quick. So the test has completed, and let's look at the results here. So the read test is, is just over a meg, or just about a meg, and the write test is about half of that. Something like that. So very, very cool. So we have that test saved if you want to ever want to go back to that. I still am cracking up that this thinks it's a quantum fireball. Whoever programmed that is a cruel that's a cruel joke. <laughs> oh my goodness. The drivers for non-network stuff? Oh, I see. Ooh. Ooh. This you save me a lot of time from copying stuff over from my from my discs here. We have both versions. Excellent. Excellent. What's the meaning of the asterisks here? Is that just typed in there for fun? All right. That was you. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Let's uh, set some patterns here. Go for a nice blue for blue scuzzy. Oh, I know what I want to do. Let's uh, let's have some fun with this, huh? We're gonna we're gonna make a desktop pattern here, and this is gonna be the unofficial, unofficial, unofficial blue scuzzy desktop pattern, and it's gonna make your eyes bleed because that's that's how this works. Oh, I screwed up already. It's kind of like a scuzzy logo. If you squint. <laughs> oh no, I lost it. Go back. Oh, I always forget how to set it. Like, you have to click in a, a certain way. We'll recreate our masterpiece. Oops. <laughs> oh, I'm bad at this. No! What a, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. So how do you confirm this? You just click on this? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's that's an eyesore, but I love it. <laughs> You're on my website, Enzo. Oh, very cool. Yeah, if I had an Ethernet cord plugged in for this, I'd be trying that out right now. What am I saying if? What what is this? A non Mac eighty four live stream? What 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 the heck is we can't have we can't have ifs going on here. Where the heck did I put that Ethernet card? Hold on. Hold on. If we're going to do something, we're going to do it properly. We're going to do it properly. Okay. So, let's uh, turn the camera around here. 
give you an understanding of the madness that goes on. So, I can't have, not even see what you're looking at, so hopefully you see me. Maybe. Alright, here's a bin. <laughs> you have a bunch of goodie cards in here. So, they're not all in anti-static bags. Oh, they will be. That's the DOS card. We are not going to be using that today. Here it is. Look, I found what I was looking for. It only took me five tries. Here's another Ethernet card. What, what brand is this one? This one is a Dynaport. Okay, or Dynaport, however you say that. Uh, this one is an Asante. Right, so we're going to gently put those back there. Action, adventure, romance. This stream had it all. And we're not going to put the lid firmly back on there because it is it is not proper. But. <laughs> Wrongly placed resistor. Romance. Uh, yes, there should be the droppers on there. That's why I went for this one. So this actually came... This actually came with this Macintosh 2 SI. And so this card has a spot for an FPU, but we don't have one in there. Actually, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have the adapter. Yeah. Uh. Oops. I have the, I have the adapter. I bought the, uh, the Nubus card adapter for this thing that has the FPU on it. I don't know where it is. I guess we're gonna have to be FPU-less for now. I saw it while I was cleaning up, but it could be anywhere, so I'm not gonna waste time. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> well, well, we'll soon find out. That's, uh, that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm just checking around to see if I just placed it like next to something. Maybe. Probably not. All right, let's shut this machine down. We're going to install <laughs> We're going to install this network card here. Um, yeah, I had the PDS to... Uh, well, it's not It's not PDS. It's just... Oh, yeah, PDS to Nubus adapter. Um, sorry. Uh, for this system. And uh, it has an FPU built in there, which is nice. But I'm just going to do this the old-fashioned way. We're just going to plug this card in. I'm just waiting for the 2SI to shut down properly. Okay, and we're gonna plug this in. And the webcam will probably want to plummet to its death, so if it falls, I'm sorry. But sometimes that's what happens here. Especially when you, you don't have a good thingy that holds it. Okay, so let's make sure we're installing this properly. Okay, and this one actually has a little screw. I forget which way it goes in. It goes in one way, yeah, and it goes like this. And there's a little screw that uh, I have to uh, put in there. Now, that, that termination power could be a fuse, and I could check that with my multimeter in a second. I actually have a pack of replacement fuses. Um, but I think it's right under the fan, so it, it might be a little hard to do that. But let, let's try it one thing at a time here. This screw is kind of annoying to get out of here, but... Why aren't you using a screwdriver, Steven? I don't know. All right, so actually, I'm going to put those ports in there and I'm going to put the screw in on this side because it's just easier for me to get to. So there's just this little uh, nut and bolt that uh, goes onto the edge here. Now there were two at one point in time but by the time I got this there was only one. But that's okay. Now we're going to see if this wants to play nice with my network. I don't think it will, but we'll try. We'll try. And 
Where far out thou multimeter? Where the heck did that thing go? Oh, I'll use the other one. Right, so let me unplug this from power so I don't uh, kill myself here. Ah, uh, Alone in the Dark, all oh, Mac Arcade. Excellent choices there. All right, let's just see if we have any continuity on this fuse here. Yes, we do. Okay, and... Uh, should we have continuity on that diode for the SCSI connector? Because we're not, we're not uh, getting any beeps on that one. But it could be a number of things. There could be other fuses on this board that has gone... Uh, but I know SCSI termination on this machine, I had problems with the SCSI 2SD adapter anyway, so. Alright, so let's plug things back in. Let's point the, our high-tech video capture device at our screen. Uh, this reminds me of the old days. And let's boot her up. Just adjust this cable. Okay. Ding! I'm very excited we got uh, this all up and running. And we do have a link light on the Ethernet card, which is fantastic. I love that chime. Little guitar string. Ding! There we go. Yeah, there's no PRAM battery in here, so it forgot the... Uh, the uh, color settings and all that goodness. All right, so thank you for the disk image there, Tom. Uh, I'm just gonna rename it because that's what I do. This thing is pretty darn quick. Okay, so we have some drivers in here. Now we do have this Dana port installer image. Let's see. What did this open with? They open with stuff it. Okay. That's not exactly what we want to do, buddy. Uh, so let's open up. Oh, it's probably under utilities. We're going to personalize the heck out of this system. Because that's what we do. Just hold, please. What is he doing? He's gone mad with power! Oh, that's right. We don't have the... <laughs> this is 7.1, not 7.5. Anyway, let's open up uh, Disk Copy. I get my System 7s confused. Yeah, well, we, we'll, we'll try uh, Drop Disk now. <laughs> because, <laughs> obviously... Not a fan of, uh, whoop. hold on, okay, well, what was I expecting, huh, well then, we have an alias <laughs> that uh, doesn't go anywhere unless it's hiding out here. And one of these spots. It's just, I'm just curious about something. Uh, it's probably because I renamed the disc. Uh, no, it shouldn't. Uh, aliases actually are pretty smart in Mac OS. Unless not on this particular version. Because if I click on this alias... Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> that was probably it. Because if I get info on this, it should tell me... Yeah, so let's... let's. 
So original was seven five five. Okay, well this this is what was it seven dot one, like that. I think that's what was it. Oh, this is it's looking for a different disk there. So um, I'm not using that disk image, but it's looking for this. So yeah, we just have a slight problem. That's all right. Um, so it, it didn't matter what I was looking for because those aliases are just. Um, it's look. It's no big, no big deal. Let's see if we have any other drivers in here that may work for us. Maybe. No, it's not gonna help us. Nope. <laughs> He's a madman. No worries, Eric. Thank you very much for hanging out. <laughs> exactly. Don't worry. Eh, stuff happens. Alright, so Apple Talk is active. Let's see on what port. We have ways of making this work. You think I'm going to give up? Well, never. Never give up. Do we not have network stuff installed? We do not. So we do not have the network control panel. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see if there's anything in the network folder. Okay. Let's pop that open. We have browsers. Ooh, Netscape 2.02. I like it. Um... Oh, sure. I will... Yeah, let me uh, pop that open on the screen that nobody can see now. But, uh... Boop -a -doop -a -doo. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I like that, Eric. Please, please print that for my next order. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. What he did was right where, there, where I incorrectly placed the resistors. He wrote, check the values, Steve. That's... Excellent. Okay, um, we're not giving up. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna power on through, and we're gonna be able to do that because we're insane. Um, mount the drop disk from the floppy MU. Yes, I have my floppy MU. Uh, where did I put? It? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? All right. So let me uh, just shut down this machine first. I don't like hot plugging things in if I don't have to. And turn back on. And so I think uh, I think it's on. I think that app is on here. Adam, thank you very very much for the suggestion. And my little floppy MU plugged in here. Uh, disk copy four dot two. I don't see. I don't see drop disk on here. I actually never used drop disk to be totally honest with you. But uh, just load Tattle Tech here because I want to copy that over anyway. If I'm going to be using this disk image. Oh, this actually, this version actually might need uh, 7 .5. Uh, the floppy MU is completely different from the blue SCSI, but yes. I just happened to plug one in to help mess around here. And again, sorry that I'm not directly capturing the screen. This is just... Yeah. Oh, no. It actually worked. Cool. So we have built-in video. Yep, so... Uh, Dana Communications, Network, Ethernet. Okay. So we will leave this into utilities there. This is a Macintosh 2 SI. That is the machine that we are running right now. So let me see if I could get... Uh... You know what the easiest thing would be to do here? Hold, please. 
I have an idea. I have a idea. We're going to download the other disk image here, because why the heck not? We're going to wait for our download to actually think it's done, because, come on. I think I'm just pushing this poor little computer to its limit today. My poor little Mac Pro. It's like, what are you doing to me? Why? Yeah, exactly. We're going to run the 755 image. Because why not? Make things a little easier for ourselves. I'm all for tinkering, but if there's an easy solution, why why don't we just do it? <laughs> don't be silly. Like me. Alright, why won't this micro SD card go into the slot correctly on our USB ad adapter? There we go. Alright, so uh, you can't see this um, because, yeah. Um, hold, please. We're just copying over a another disk image to the SCSI, um, blue SCSI adapter here. Mac Pro, you rich? No. <laughs> uh, ask me what year the Mac Pro is from before you give me some judgment there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you take a guess of what year the Mac Pro is from before you think I, I have money to throw around. And then ask me how much I got the Mac Pro for. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to take about three minutes to transfer over. So that's that's doing that. Um, so that's, that's, that's doing the things. We'll, we'll switch back over to... The, the, well, Hi! <laughs> 2009, how about that? That's the Mac Pro that is running down here. It's a 2009 model. And it runs perfectly fine. It runs perfectly fine. The, the Rack Mount Edition, <laughs> 2020. Yeah, I, I just got a bunch of Mac Minis and duct taped them together. So we're just killing time here while this copies to the SD card. Uh, it's going to take about two or three minutes. Let's see, adjust this here. Let's take a look. I guess we could take a look at this lovely Macintosh here with all these wires hanging around. Uh, so, yeah, I have the blue SCSI that's dangling around there. Actually, let's get a better SCSI cable because that's a little too short and I'm not able to use the adapter there. So, let's use this. Uh, I have a Commodore 64. I just don't really have... Uh, anything uh, set up for it right now. Uh, I'm not too knowledgeable about those systems. I'm not saying I'll never learn, but um, they're a lot of fun. I played some games on them. Okay, so we're going to put our lovely little 3D printed bracket on here. And now we can put that where the floppy drive should be. <laughs> Cable management! Yeah! A 2009 Mac Pro is not very expensive. You could get them for under $100. I got mine for practically free. It needed parts. It really did. But I got mine for practically free. You could get one that's... people. So this is what people try and do with those old Mac Pros. They try and load them up with memory, load them up with hard drives, load them up with like three video cards, and then they try and sell them for $700, $800, $900. dollars they are absolutely ridiculous. If you could get one that's pretty stock and you upgrade it yourself, that's how you get a good deal on one. However, everyone who's selling them is trying to make a buck, so don't be surprised if those are few and far between. <laughs> I want my money back. Good luck. <laughs> oh, boy. No, see, Adrian probably knows way more about the Commodore 64 inside and out than I do. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's going he's gonna to win that. All right, so it's just uh, extracting here. It says five seconds, but there we go. I actually copied over. Excellent. All right, so let me just rename the file here to tell it which thing is going to be selected here. Okay, and then we're going to eject our SD card adapter. 
our SD card rather, not the adapter. And we're going to plug that back in to our blue SCSI. I love this thing already. It's just so cool. Did I plug that in right? Yes. And then we need our USB cable for power just because we're on the, the Macintosh 2CI here. 2SI. I keep saying 2CI. Okay. I'll just hang that over there for a while. It's going to be happy. All right. Let's turn the camera slowly. You can see all the crap that's on my desk. And we'll try and start this thing up again. Bing! And once we get this working, we'll probably call it quits for the night, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. We're going to be tinkering around for a little bit. So wait for that screen to hopefully come on. There we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal, Starbuck Tech. That's a pretty damn good deal. Two monitors and the Mac Pro, $2,200. Good deal. Two titanium power books, 100 bucks for both. Yeah, so that's a pretty good deal. All right, so we actually have both of our hard disk images here. Uh, what are we booted to? We are booted to 7.1, even though I set this as the earlier SCSI ID, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, let's do this then. Let me... Uh, Oh, I need, I need, I need some software. Um, let's, let's try this. I have a plan. I thought on, I thought on some Macs it went by the boot order. If it couldn't, if it couldn't find something. Or if it wanted to boot from something. Anyway. I'm probably confusing myself. So we're in 7.5 now. Yay! Yeah, let me know, Adam. That'll be uh, that'll be good to know if uh, you're having the same issue that I, I was having. Ah, uh, After Dark installed. Classic. Ah, uh, yes. If no startup disk is set. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't have the drivers there. We just got built in local talk. Well, let's customize this as well. Now my uh, shortcuts work. Because we're in system 7.5. This thing is, is really sweet. I'm very, very happy with this. Blue SCSI all the way, baby. All that just to do that. <laughs> I'm just curious if it's going to have better happiness trying to open the image in 7.5. Ah. Where the heck did it go? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, that must be in a format it is not happy. Oh, it thinks it's a stuff it document. Is it actually like a dot? Si yeah, that's. Is that actually like this? No. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, don't worry about that. I was just curious if we could get that working. Uh, we have different desktop patterns. Yay! Oh, 
Oh, that's right. Associating that would not have helped. I'm losing my edge, Adam. I'm losing my edge. That's why we have you fine folks here to tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to steal the VGA cable from this while it decides what to do with that. And I'm going to plug it into this clone here for a second. And the reason I'm doing that is I have a, a, a mouse plugged into here. I'm just curious which orientation is up here. I'm using this the wrong way, aren't I? Yeah, there we go. Uh, Apple Talk. Which port is Apple Talk selected? What are you doing? Are you mad? You're creating a network. <clears throat> That's right, baby. take its sweet time doing that. So we can unplug this, go back to here. He's a madman. A madman. Mac clone is uh, just thrashing away there. <laughs> okay, this is concerning. <laughs> Come on, buddy. There we go. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's right. We might not have. Well, then local talk. <clears throat> oh, see, I'm so unfamiliar with the... Uh... Wait, how would I... Oh, see, this is what I get confused about, because I'm so used to the newer open transport. When there's not an Apple Talk control panel, I forget... I forget how you basically tell it... <clears throat> what uh, port you want to use for it. Yeah, I just get easily confused. The blue SCSI is working great, actually. And, uh, yeah, realizing that we have Mac TCP enabled and all this stuff, uh, I was going to try and drag o over some goodies from the clone here. But, oh, wait, 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 I have an idea. Go to the image writer, set that, that's what you'd have to do. There we go. Yep. Then we go to Apple Share. Let's try that again. I think that's what I did once. No. <laughs> yeah, for some reason it, it just wants to... Oh, was it maybe the remote access? Oh, what the heck control panel was it? There's a way to do it, and it's just going to drive me crazy because I can't remember. Ah. Ooh, control strip. Oh. <laughs> every, every, every step I take, this machine is, is fighting me. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to me. Or maybe there's just not a way to do it on this system. There has to be a way, though. Because if I go to network... <laughs> yeah, sharing is turned on on the clone because it, it does that on startup by default. If I go to network, maybe that's where I set. There we 
this built in local talk. See, it's not. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Let me just plug it into the darn printer port. Oh, I'm so stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs> just do the simplest solution, Steven. Jeez Louise. All right, we got the power center, baby. And what I did there, folks, was just physically switch the port. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do here is do some magic. We're going to do a few things here. Um... We're going to get Open Transport installed. <clears throat> oh, don't feel bad, Tom. My images are screwed up, and I do this more often than I should. Now, Bruce is going to laugh wherever he is, even though he's not watching this stream. Because whenever I try to install Open Transport 1.3 on this exact Macintosh, I've run into issues. <laughs> it's cheating. <laughs> uh, well, we're copying over our local talk speeds, so is that cheating? No. That's called, that's called being patient. So I'm going to let that copy over. I'm going to uh, just stretch my legs here. I'll be right back in a moment. And I found what I was looking for. Ugh. I knew I saw it before. And that is this beautiful thing. This is a PDS to Nubus adapter with the FPU on there. Which should speed things up a bit. Yeah, I have uh, SSDs for newer Macs. I have one in my PowerBook G4, which is an excellent machine. So I certainly have that. Uh, a Color Classic, yeah. I mean, basically, these SCSI hard drive emulators are like SSDs. So that's why they're pretty zippy. I mean, you're not going to get an insane speed boost, but uh, you're going to get a reasonable boost in speed, which is nice. Oh, Rich, I want my Quadra 840 AV to work as well. Um, mine uh, had some very bad leaking capacitors and basically hurt the machine, um, so... Yeah, I would highly suggest you get that recapped as soon as you can. It doesn't have to be from me. I mean, I'll gladly recap it for you, but uh, either way, get it get it done. <laughs> no, I I don't think. I don't think you could really backwards engineer the Macintosh hard drive port if you're talking about the SCSI port. I mean, the speed is what the speed is. Um, it's built into the, the architecture of the logic board. I don't think it would be as easy as that if you're, if you're referring to that. <laughs> Ooh, nice score, Adam. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, the Power Macintoshes have 
SCSI cards. I mean, there were Nuba SCSI cards, but they're very hard to find. But Power Max had, had faster SCSI cards. I, I had one just uh, just over here. And this is this is a PC variety, but this, this is a fast SCSI card. You have uh, two ports there and one port here. And that would give you much faster SCSI functionality than a built-in Power Mac. But yeah, that's... There are limitations to everything. And also, people like put G3 upgrades into things. You forget the system bus, if it's only like 40 megahertz, it's still going to slow down the system. No matter what. Everything goes through that bus of the system. So, that's why it's called a system bus. This has been Storytime with Steve from Mac84. And let's copy over this Apple Share client thing, because that's important too. Six megs, oh boy. <laughs> well, at least it'll be on here. That's cool though. I like I like being just able to mount these disk images just like boom boom boom. I could I create a brand new system and then I'll have that as an image. And I could just duplicate it. Uh, you know, that, that's amazing. While this is happening, I should be in, uh, soldering the other kit, but uh, I don't think we'll be able to do that today. Uh, if this was compatible with that stuff, I would install something like Apple Business Server or the Workgroup Server stuff. I do have those machines. Um, I'd love to get those up and running, but geez, I guess I have to order a, a bunch more blue SCSI adapters. Um, I don't have that much cash lying around, so I gotta wait. <laughs> but maybe, maybe because some of the awesome super chats, I can, uh, I can buy one or two more adapters when I have time. But uh, working fantastic in this machine, I'll probably leave it in here. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other machines. Oh, gosh, I need so many, <laughs> so many. No, there is absolutely no way to get USB 1.0 or USB 2.0 to work under the Mac OS on a Macintosh 2. First off, you got the new bus slot. That does not support USB. You would need a PCI slot that supports USB. And USB support was not actually into the op built into the operating system until Mac OS 8.1, which this machine cannot run. And even though it was supported in Mac OS 8.1, it was only supported on the iMac G3, which was the only computer at the time that had USB built into it. And then you get up to 8.5, 8.6, and those are all power PC only. So no, no way in heck you're going to get functional USB out of this system on the native Mac OS. It's been going on for two hours and 53 minutes. Oh, that's really cool, Rich. I, I hope you have great success with those machines. All right, so this is just uh, copying along there. Sorry, I know this is probably a little boring to you guys, but uh, I just want to see if we could get some things working, and if not, we'll call it a day. But uh, while this is going, I am downloading some suggested goodies from Macintosh Garden, and we will uh, get those to work, hopefully. That's a, a whopping 503 kilobytes, so we can copy that over the network here, and... Once that is ready, we could put that on our clone and then we could copy that over just like we're doing now. I should have done that before, but I wasn't thinking. So we'll just have to wait. Oh, that printout was when I reached 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I did a little live stream and I made a banner. So let me uh, stand up and I'll, I'll point the camera to it. I'm almost at 6,000 subscribers, so I guess I'll have to update that eventually. But 5,000 was a big deal for me. It still is. So I can't, I can't see what I'm previewing. There we go. Uh, so there we go. That's, that's printed out on my image writer in all its glory. Under that is a 1,000 subscriber banner. But we jumped right up to 5,000, so yay! Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing here, and here's the, the Macintosh that is running it. So there you go.
Yeah, that's what I plan to use the Rask SCSI adapter for, is for uh, SCSI Ethernet. But uh, since I have the ability to have an Ethernet cord in here, we're going to do that for now. Uh, I would like to have uh, a graphics card in here that would allow me to work with the scaler correctly because that's what's really going on right now that's sort of preventing us from doing that. It's perfectly safe as long as you don't have any sensitive information on these systems. I mean, honestly, most cyber attacks and stuff like that are not targeting vintage Macintosh computers. I would certainly not put Windows XP or Windows 7 on the internet without any uh, fortified defenses, but uh, Vintage Max is another story. Just be smart about it. You know, don't, don't put any personal data on it. You, you're obviously not going to go on websites that can, uh, you know, uh, purchase anything or you're going to be entering your credit card in or any silly stuff like that. So. Well, it would help if I disconnected the, uh, the Apple Share thing first. Hold on. Let's do it this way. Eject. Okay, so we're just sharing a monitor here, so that's why the screen's going blank. Sorry. That's a good thing I left the mouse plugged into the uh, power center here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to unplug the Ethernet from our card. I'm going to plug that back into the Mac clone here. We're going to... Uh, Actually, here, we could do it this way. <laughs> yeah, actually, I could, I could do that. Uh, oh, no way, I can't. Never mind. Um, yeah, so let's go over here. And we're going to go to Apple Talk. Uh, if it was a suitable enough Mac that met the system requirements of Doom, then heck yeah. It should. Yes, that is Star Wars Screen Entertainment, a bunch of screensavers. Sorry this stream has involved so much rummaging around, but that's 90% of what I do here. I need to get another cable, so hold on, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes. You can count all the pretty icons on my desktop there. They're very pretty. All right, so I just had to grab that, and now I had to wiggle free the keyboard that was under the desk plugged into this. Macintosh clone. Okay, and so still using the little trackball I got plugged in here. We're gonna go to the chooser. We're gonna connect to our G4 Mac Mini here. transfers folder here <laughs> and slowly slowly scroll up here and let's see if that'll actually open so that's from Macintosh Garden it should open okay this trackball is very slow Yay! <laughs> oh, let's.
let's hope this image opens. And look at that. Okay, cool. So, now we have to eject that. Now we have to eject this. <laughs> Slowly move the cursor. Go back to Apple Talk. And now you're questioning why would anybody in their right mind want to play around with vintage computers? And this is the question I ask myself every day of my life. Okay, so now we could switch the video again. And we can't use the built-in stuff for the scaler because the 2SI doesn't like that. You're out of focus. I'm always out of focus. Come on. Well, that's just silly. It was working before. I didn't touch anything on the uh, on the Macintosh 2SI side. There it is. Copy that over. So we uh, put that SCSI adapter. Unfortunately, the image, the uh, video capture stuff isn't working. So I have a camera plugged into that. So I wish I had my second camera facing me so it wasn't so impersonal. But yeah, that's what's going on here. Okay, we can eject that. And now, <laughs> with any luck, which this stream has had little of so far, we can maybe install this this stuff for the Ethernet card. Maybe. Extensions must be disabled before installation. Really? Really? I mean, I guess you better listen to it. I'm just going to copy this to a folder so I don't have to, like, launch disk copy and everything. And we'll restart with extensions off, I guess. I mean, maybe I'm taking that message a little too literally, but... You had the LCARS screensaver with... Oh, the, the Star Trek uh, screens and animations. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So let's... Perform that installation without extensions turned on. Ooh, you got zapped. That's no fun. I bet you learned your lesson, though, didn't you, Rich? <laughs> How many clones do I have? Three. A Power Computing, a Umax, and an M-Power by APS. 
All right, we're going to reboot. Now, whether this card will uh, like our network is a whole other story. Uh, and we also have to install Open Transport, which may or may not install. <laughs> we will see. Uh, it depends on the system software. Uh, system 7 could do partitions of 2 gigs, but the hard drive could be larger. System 7.5 could do partitions of, I think, 4 gigs or higher, depending on what your settings are. Um, but the hard drive size could be higher. The volume has to be a little lower. And then anything up until a G4, some of the early G4s, uh, you need to... I think it there's a, a limitation of supporting 128 gigs, but it also depends on the, the software and a bunch of other stuff and your hardware model. And I'm not getting into all the details, but it, there's, there's a lot of differences. Uh, this guy... Uh, how much memory? That's right, 17 megs of memory. I was just trying to remember. Let's see if Open Transport wants to install or if it's going to make a fool out of myself. Because sometimes it'll go into a weird loop where it's looking for a disk and it can't find it. Come on, please work. Oh yeah, Macintosh Garden is excellent. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You are joining late, Dan, but that's okay. Welcome, Dan. Ah! This is exactly the problem that I have always had on this machine. And I have no clue, no matter what hard drive I use, no matter what installation media I use, I get this error when I'm trying to install Open Transport 1.3. I I just it doesn't matter if I do a custom install. It looks for disk one, which is in a folder, and it just flips out. No, this is not a clone. This is a Macintosh 2 SI. Oh, boy. And, yeah, I really wish I knew what the heck was going on here. Because this same exact install in the same exact folder will install perfectly fine on a Power Mac or a different Macintosh 68K machine. But it, it does this. It's looking for disk one. Uh, so there's something going on where it's, it's confused. I've tried that. Oh, trust me. There's like a there's like a three hour live stream of me banging my head against the wall of this. I've actually made floppies of each and every one of these folders with floppies and installing them as if they were on floppy disks. And you know what? Same exact problem. Yeah, I mean, we do have a ROM sim in here. I guess I could shove my, uh, <laughs> my rominator in here, but I don't think that's going to help it. That'd be funny if that was the case, though. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be hilarious? I think it does take a rominator, and I have one right here. Or maybe it has to do with, like, 32-bit addressing or something. Let's Let's see something here. Let's let's figure this out, folks. We've come too far to give up now. Because I've never heard of anybody else having the exact issue I'm having here. Or at least they haven't had a solution for that. 32-bit addressing on.
Yeah, and I've, I've tried that. I've tried to mount, mount the disk copy images. Uh, I've made disk copy images of those folders. I wrote them to actual floppy disks. I've tried so many times. There's probably a live stream of me doing this like forever. And it just, it just did not want to work. So we're going to try it again. <laughs> yes, I work tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sure the disk speed test would be faster if I have the FPU installed. That'd be neat. I have to get a spare FPU chip because there is a socket on this network card for it, but it's just not installed. Uh, yeah, I'll see if Open Transport or anything is in the Dana port uh, floppy. I don't. I don't know if it is, but I do have a different version of Open Transport on the other machine. Uh, I think it's version 2. 1.2 or something. I've also tried this with the FPU just to see if that made a difference and did not. This is a Macintosh 2 SI. And nope, same darn issue. I'm going to try with the ROM just for the heck of it. Would it be smart to hook up your Wii to the internet? I I mean, I don't know. There's security implications there. And honestly, emulating the Mac OS on anything that doesn't have a keyboard makes little sense to me. But you could do whatever the heck you'd like. Alright, so... Let's point the camera back down here. So we're going to install this big mess of wires ROM into this machine. There's so many wires everywhere. I'm going to take this out just because it's easier to do so. Wrong way around. And I have to put a jumper on here. Uh, let's see if this jumper over here is the right size. It may not be. No, that is too small. So I need a larger jumper. Let me grab this one here and that jumper will tell it to boot from the ROM in the ROM sim okay and hopefully this doesn't blow anything up so I only got one of those yep it worked cool yep there goes the camera sorry Yeah, StarTech does make uh, pretty good stuff, so I'd try that. So this is using a different ROM. I'm very curious to see if this allows us to get past that issue. Let's see what it identifies itself as. Yeah, 2SI still, okay. Uh, if you're using IDE, I would just use a IDE to SD or IDE to Compact Flash Adapter. Alex, um, SCSI does have its uses, um, but honestly, if you don't have to use it, IDE might be a very uh, easier solution to you. Or you could use an IDE to SATA adapter and use an SSD. You know, that might work out for you. Um, you have to make sure all that stuff is compatible, though, because not all these uh, SATA or SD card adapters are compatible with Macs. So you got to be careful about that. I mean, there's no reason why the SCSI one wouldn't work as long as your Mac, is another thing, as long as your Mac has a bootable SCSI card. Not all SCSI cards are bootable. They'll display the drive, but they may not be bootable. And why is this taking so long? <laughs> Did it freeze up? Come on.
Well, this is not instilling any confidence in me. Well, it says extensions must be off and we didn't listen to it, so... Let's try booting up with extensions off. Okay, well, if you're, if you're, uh... If you'll boot off a of SCSI, you might not really get this the performance increase using a SCSI 2SD adapter or a blue SCSI or whatever on a Power Mac like that. Um, really, the the performance increase is done when you have uh, a really fast SCSI card and a really fast SCSI hard drive. That's where you're going to get the... Uh, why am I doing this? No, the wrong one. Oh, boy. No, no, no. Let me cancel out of this. I See, I, I'm, I was talking and I did the other thing because I'm dumb. I'll just quit this. This is what I wanted. <laughs> Come on. Yes, I plugged in the big mess of wires ROM. And we're about to see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Yeah, I am booted to seven point one, but I'm I'm trying to boot to I'm trying to install it on the other disc. I don't know if that's gonna hurt or help this either way, but Nope. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> no worries. Have a good night. That's a lot of adapters. Although, uh, that's that's really cool to upgrade to iPod like that because the, the flash storage really reduces battery power from what I understand. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up here soon. I'm just tinkering around with stuff at this point and we're going far... <laughs> oh... Yeah, I think that's um, that's a cue to, to stop messing around with this, because... <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm not trying it on another machine. That piece of software is a pain in the butt. Um, I will assemble my other blue SCSI adapter... And I will plug that into another machine at some point in time. Um, uh, we're just going to... I just want to see if that... Uh, what installed with that Dana port thing. And uh, just see if we get an IP address or something. Yeah, those MSATA adapters are really cheap. Those like IDE to MSATA adapters are pretty cheap. Oh, we need some color. I would assume they would just act as independent units, but I'm not sure. Because uh, they're doing some fanciness with... Uh, as long as you don't conflict the SCSI IDs, it may not be a problem. But what do I know? <laughs> Okay, so we do have EtherTalk in here now. So that's good, I guess. Let's see if we can see any of the Macs on the network. Mm, no. Yeah, we still don't have an Apple Talk control panel. That's what the Open Transport would have been helpful for. <laughs> what? 
What? Oh yeah, I've never ever been able to do this properly. Let's just see if there's another version of on, on this hard drive just sitting around somewhere. Nopeity nopeity nope. Nope, 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 nope. Well, I think that's going to have to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, network cable is plugged in, and we have a little light on it. Um, hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me see if I have something plugged in here correctly. Okay, that's going to there. And then that cable goes to here, and that cable plugs into here. I'm just unplugging some cables. Gonna try something. People are saying your live streams are too long. I believe them. Okay. So now we have picture in picture. How about that? But now we're getting fancy here. Now we're getting super fancy. So I could. I could go along here if I wanted to. Okay, so that's fine. As long as, um, uh, let's see. Mommy, what is the strange man trying to do with the computer again? Never mind him, dear. Just keep walking. It's only three hours. Gotta wait for Bruce to get back. Or Jay to pretend like he's still watching. Ah, oh, it's the same darn thing. I thought I had a different version of Open Transport. Yeah, see, all I have is, uh, is 1.3. I don't think we can install it manually, because I think there are, like, the tomb files or whatever. Well, what the heck, let's try and install it manually. Right? What do we got to lose? Everything! Perfect. This is going to go very wrong very quickly. <laughs> oh boy. Hey Greg. 
Yes. I have no idea if I'm doing this correctly. No, wait, the chooser goes in... The control panel? Yes. Or whatever it is. Uh, let's just... This must be a control panel. Well, let's see. Because it should be smart enough to tell us. No, I don't know what it is. Let's just dump it in the system folder. Oh, that's a bad idea. This is not going to go the way I planned, is it? Nope. Sure. Why? Why not? Um, oh wait. Yeah, they probably should live in the preferences folder, huh? Sure. Uh, extensions, maybe. I have no clue. Uh, we do not need the the power PC ones. Yeah, I think those are the power PC ones. I have no idea which ones these are, but yeah, let's put them in. What, what's the worst we'll get? Some extension conflicts? Bring it on. That hard drive is sitting right behind me. That's what happened to that hard drive. <laughs> oh, bumper gooification. Oh, that's sad. That's what happens with old hard drives. My gosh, it made it to the desktop. I am as shocked as you are. Please work. I am cautiously optimistic. you click something on this control panel it just yeah 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 don't say use open transport that's what I'm trying to do buddy yeah open transports already selected it doesn't. It doesn't seem to like the. Uh, uh, the look, it wasn't installed properly. I probably screwed it up.
Well. Let's go for it. Why the heck not? We've made it this far. <laughs> the blue screen of life lifts us up. I was really hoping to get a scripted video out by the end of this week, but I don't think that's going to happen. Especially with these long live streams. Sorry. What I guess I would have to do is install Open Transport on a non Macintosh 2SI system <laughs> and then just use that disk image on this. That's probably a, a better way to go about this. Who knows why that installer just does not work on this system? I have no clue. Absolutely no clue. But at least it's documented here for all the internet to see and go, that guy did it wrong and I know why, and then maybe we'll find out. Exactly. It, it worked on my Macintosh 2 systems also. So that's maybe something I'll just do is install it on that and just... I have no idea. Maybe it's looking for something, or I, I just have no clue why it wouldn't work on this particular hardware. Nope, I tried that. I tried, uh, Thomas, I tried it on 7.1 on another machine. What did it do? Did it, did it quit? Now I'm going to have to press this stop button as soon as it loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise it's going to try and load a web page and go crazy. Ah! Network is down! Really? What's the difference? <laughs> Check your DSL modem. It could also just be that this Ethernet card does not like the i the uh, gigabit Ethernet router I have. That could easily be the issue. Uh, I've had very strange issues with that, and that just could be it. But I'm not going to plug in another router at this point. It's too late. And this is not going to work when I hit save. It's going to error out. Yep. Oh, well. At least we had fun tonight, didn't we? <laughs> we were successful in the fact that we have a uh, blue SCSI working here, which is really cool. Um, but I will not let you down about web surfing on System 7. Because... I have this machine right here. I'm going to turn this camera around. Hello. How can I make this go lower? Anyway, trying to adjust this. It's not really working out here, but I'll show you what System 7 looks like on the web because we have it thankfully installed and working properly on the Power Macintosh we have here. So. We're going to go ahead. Oops, what did I do? Wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to try and end this successfully. Oh, 
Okay, that's good. And here's Netscape. Or is that the installer? Yeah, that's the installer. We don't want that. This trackball was a bad idea. No, because if I pull out a Macintosh LC, we'll be here for another three hours. And I gotta get up to work tomorrow. Haha, <laughs> there we go. How about that? <laughs> sure, it places the images in a weird place. But that's just what Netscape does. In fact, uh, I recently redid this part of my website here. So this should load quicker, and the images are of an appropriate size. Oh, did I make that a different color? I must have. Maybe? I don't know. But anyway. That is lucky, Adam. If you if you want to send me a message and tell me which ones work, uh, that would be excellent to know. I'm about to trade away one of my Ethernet cards, so I would love to know that. And we could go to Macintosh Garden. One of the coolest Macintosh websites around, baby. And we're going to go to the Alpha site, which is something that is truly stupendous. Because look at this. This is a site that is made just for these vintage computers. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that really cool? And we go to, let's say we go to games. I can't even read because my screen is much smaller here than yours is. Let me open up a new window here. 101 amazing things to do with your computer. Sounds perfect. Very, very cool. Obviously, uh, this is still a work in progress, but I love the Macintosh Gardens. It's an absolutely fantastic website. And go check it out on your vintage or your modern computer. Highly, highly recommend it. They are both Cabletron cards. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Thank you, Adam. Awesome. Um, I don't know if they have a hard drive LED connector. Uh, Tom, do the Blue Scuzzies have a hard drive LED connector? If not, I'm sure that wouldn't be too difficult to maybe hack on there. I'm going to shut this machine down. And we're going to shut our other Macintosh down as well. And got a lot quieter in here because we don't have a lot of spinning hard drives. Oh, the current board does not have an LED indicator. Oh, that's okay. I will wait to buy more when it does because I like I like some hard drive activity LEDs. It, goes, it looks like a mess in the background. It is, but it's not that bad. Uh, the camera makes it look much worse. But anyway, got some old got some hardware way older than 60K Mac. Want to get working? Oh, wow. Smith Corona. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> 1960s era computing. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, if you do if you do some videos on that, I'm sure... I mean, I'll watch it. That'll be cool. But, yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah, so I guess that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, we were successful in building our blue SCSI adapter, and I'm going to hold it up here. My little 3D case keeps falling off, but I just need, like, a rubber band or something like that. But, uh... Yeah, we, we succeeded, so that was cool. Uh, I'm glad that uh, we were able to get this working. And Tom and Eric and everybody in the chat, thank you very much for helping me out here. 
Uh, I'm going to play around with this more, probably install it in another Macintosh 2 and install Open Transfer properly. Maybe that'll work. But, uh, yeah, maybe you'll be able to dive. Oh, yeah, you might be able to tap into something on here. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put it past it. So you're saying PC13. I have no idea where that is. I'll just pretend. I'll nod and smile. But <laughs> the bright light behind me. Those are lights. Um, all right. So that's about it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and watching this video. I know it was much longer than I anticipated. So sorry if you got uh, bored <laughs> or anything like that. But uh, you still got about 30 people watching here. So thank you so much for stopping by. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, if you're new, please consider doing that. I'd greatly appreciate that. And give this video a like. That's a little thumbs up. We're almost at 6K subscribers, so I, I don't know how that happened. But um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. You can support me on Patreon if you want. I just posted a little behind-the-scenes video on there. That's patreon.com slash mac84. Uh, little, little as a dollar a month, you get access to that stuff. I don't have these high tiers or anything like that, but... That's about it. Go buy a blue SCSI. Go to scuzzy.blue.com and what are you waiting for? They're cheap. They're effective. Go get one. I love them. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a good night.